It's time for Windows Weekly. Paul Theron and Mary Jo Foley are here. So is this the new Surface Go? Mary Jo and I will have our review of Microsoft's tiniest, cutest little Surface. We'll also talk about the new version of Redstone 5. And Skype's back, baby. It's all coming up next on Windows Weekly. Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. This is Windows Weekly with Paul Theron and Mary Jo Foley. Episode 581. Recorded Wednesday, August 8th, 2018. Not with my gorilla hands. Windows Weekly is brought to you by WordPress. Reach more customers when you build your business website on WordPress.com. Plans start at just $4 a month, and you'll get 15% off any new plan at WordPress.com slash Windows. And by Rocket Mortgage from Quicken Loans. Introducing Rate Shield Approval. If you're in the market to buy a home, Rate Shield Approval locks up your rate for up to 90 days while you shop. It's a real game changer. Learn more and get started at rocketmortgage.com slash windows. It's time for Windows Weekly, the cute little show that fits in the palm of your hand. <laughs> Here they are, stars of our show from beautiful New York, New York, Mary Jo Foley, all about Microsoft.com, her ZDNet blog, and from Stockholm, Switzerland, Mr. <laughs> Paul. <laughs> Mr. Paul. Close Close. enough. <laughs> Sweden, Switzerland, what's the difference? I saw a sign today that says Stockholm, the capital of Scandinavia. I was oh. like, you know, I'm going to think there are a couple of the cities that might have brought it. I don't know how the Norwegians and the Finns yeah. might feel about yeah, that. Possibly the Danish, too. Finland isn't really, uh, Finland is its own thing because they don't speak Scandinavian. Uh, yeah, uh, <laughs> <laughs> Right. They also don't use Sweeto bucks, as I call them. <laughs> Sweeto bucks. It, it's not a euro uh, euro thing there. No, it's not. It's mm -hmm. like um, it's like Venezuelan currency. You have to do like this incredible math every time you buy anything. Why does mm -hmm. a donut cost three thousand dollars? <laughs> oh, because we're in Sweden. That's why uh, Japan is so f easy because yen a yen is basically a penny. Right. And the euro is close enough to a buck that you know mocks nicks. Yep. Yep. But how many how many kroners are there per? It's actually about a hundred to one. So no, it's about so 10, 10, 10 to one. Yeah, so it's a right. dime. But it's still you get a, you get a, a, like a lunch bill and it's um five hundred fifty something I whatever know, kroner. It's and you're like, Dai. oh, oh wait, <laughs> <laughs> you know. whoa, yeah, whoa. you're not gonna get a good tip, sorry. <laughs> whoa, you're gonna get a fifty cent tip. Yeah, actually, that's a pretty good tip here. Do they tip uh, in Sweden? Just like ten percent at restaurants. Yeah. I loved Japan. They just prevent tipping. They'll actually yeah, chase it, you and say, "Oh, you, sir, sir, you left some money on the table." Yeah, literally. They just do not let yeah. you. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, like I like it. I like it. I know. Yep. That just yep. makes sense. Pay pay a living wage and then, uh, you know, charge me a little oh, more. Listen, That's I, let me tell you seriously. I, I, this place has it figured out. And and the thing that is most amazing about this. I assumed, even coming from Emmaus, which I have described as the whitest place in America, that this would be the whitest place in the world. This is the most diverse place I have ever visited in my entire life. Yeah. It is amazing. Yeah, President Trump told us that. <laughs> okay. they, they, got, they got real problems with all that no, immigration. No, they have no problems. <laughs> They've got no problems. Uh, it, well, other than the 16 hours of darkness in the winter. But other than that, yeah. like as far as integrating people in their society... This place is amazing. Yeah, that's interesting. I don't remember that from being there, but yeah, no, it's, I it's also amazing. was there in the winter. So right. No, it's uh, what were you I, doing I, was, in the winter in Sweden? Oh man, I was speaking at a conference in November in Stockholm a holy few years ago, holy. and it was dark, like Paul said, at, like most of the day, three hours or so, not dark. Yeah, so now it's late most of the day. Actually, Leo, yeah. you missed this last week. I didn't have lights on in here, and it got progressively darker as the <laughs> show went on. I've seen that happen with you, Paul. You get yeah, progressively so time, darker even if you're not in Sweden. It's true. I do. That's true. There's a couple of drinks that get really dark. <laughs> um, but I turned on some lights, so maybe this time we'll be okay. Okay. It, it looks good. You got Life Magazine behind you. Is that a special issue of uh, Life Magazine? Actually, that's a... I can't go the wrong way. That's a, a poster. I believe that is... Um, 
uh, Ernest Hemingway. It's the Ernest, oh, Ernest Hemingway book. Neat. Cover. That's neat. There's like an Obama poster over there. Wow. And then what I think is Chiquita Banana. Is that a thing? Yeah, Chiquita I Banana. Like, and then I come to say, like, bananas like, like to rip in in a special way when they're flicked with brown and have a golden hue. Bananas are the ve very, very best for you. Sorry. I remember that. Do you? You mm -hmm. can eat them in a salad. Da, 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 da. You can eat them in a pie. Da, 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 da. <laughs> Any way you really want to eat them, you really cannot beat them. Bananas have the flavor of the tropical <laughs> equator. So never put bananas in the refrigerator. Oh, no, no, no. Oh, wow. Yep. It's so just like butter. Butter. Unless it's... <laughs> I, don't, I don't refrigerate my butter either, unless it's 100 degrees. Yeah, yes. you would hear this week. Ooh. Yeah. It just, then you get a puddle. Yeah. So, um, okay, enough, you know. Sure. Chit chat. <laughs> Enough derailing. Enough, enough derailing. I'm holding in my hand. Now, I noticed, Mary Jo, you got the blue suede blue version of the Alcantara. Surface Go. Alcantara. I, I went all out this time. I mm -hmm. got the uh, Cordoba. Did you guys both get the upper level version? Or, Mary Jo, did you get the lower end version? No, I got the um, upper end yeah. version also. Yeah. I am really curious to see... Somebody. Comparison to the anybody. two. You know? yeah. yeah, I haven't seen anybody review the lower end one, I don't no. think. It's really, it's really that uh, predictably irrational thing that you, I don't know. There's a name for it. That's right. Yep. <laughs> Where you have, yeah, you offer one that's a piece of junk, but then for fifty, hundred dollars more, you have the real one. And everybody goes, and what a, you know? Oh, I love <laughs> yeah. the low price, but you know, I can, I can afford a little more to get the little bit better. Yep. And nobody buys that low price one. Obviously, Microsoft doesn't expect anybody to buy it. Maybe so, schools or, yeah. you know, like people who buy it in bulk, maybe. Yeah, it'd be fine it's, for a school. so not future-proof. I, I just don't oh, understand. Yeah. No, it's, but it's, you know, they're talking about it for like K through 12, but but um, emphasis on the lower end, K through like yeah. third grade right. or whatever. So, so don't even think it's future-proof. Leo, future did you proof. have this before you went on your trip? Uh, I did not. I got it on Friday. You, you got yeah. it? Okay. Yeah. Uh, and then, and, and, but I did get it in time to decide what I'm going to bring with me to Europe because mm. it'd, be, it'd be kind of. Uh -huh. I mean, it, it's really between this and the iPad Pro. I've already. I'm going to bring a 15 inch laptop just because. Leo, well, these things are so small. You could bring both. I could bring both. It's the same <laughs> as an iPad, basically. Yeah. And I and I and actually I really like it. I the only. I'll let Mary Jo really do the professional review, but I, but as a as an end user, the only negative is the size of the bezels. I think. Hmm. Um, I wish if you know this could be so cool if they'd gone closer yes. to the edge. In other words, they they could have been an eleven, yeah, almost twelve inch something. Same if they had size just, device, but just th there's a yeah. lot of. See, a I, lot I would of have a problem frame on that. My, I, with my gorilla hands, I don't know if I could deal with that. Well, that's the theory with the tablets. You have to have something to hold it on. But all right, especially if you're marketing it to, to kids yeah. and first line workers who okay. you're going to assume right. are using it as a tablet with maybe. Most likely without a keyboard, I think you kind of have to have big bezels for that. But but right. don't don't we have pretty good re, you know stray signal palm rejection mm. kind of stuff now? Yeah. And, could, right. And Apple is almost certainly going to release an iPad Pro that well, has that's the thing. extremely right. small bezels any day now. Right. Yeah. That's right. the thing is you're gonna the thing people are yeah. going to compare it against is going to have very little bezels. Yeah. yeah. Mary Jo, you and I appear to be in the same room. I know it's really yeah. cool. <laughs> there is really kind of cool. a weird. <laughs> It's so cool because you both have bookshelves behind you. I might you. swivel this over. Am I going to see Mary Jo? Yeah. It's, <laughs> it's, kind of, it's kind of it's kind of very strange. nice. It's very nice. <laughs> it's very good. There's a unity to this that I that there I really is. like. So Mary Jo, um, lappable. I know no. that's a concern. Not really, right? It's too floppy. Not really. So. You know, it's funny. Every time I bring this up, somebody's like, well, if I was sitting back on my couch watching TV, it could be lappable. I'm like, yeah. If I cross my legs and sit in a full lotus position, yeah. maybe it's lappable I've too. I've tried. Right? I've <laughs> tried. It's too, it falls through the hole in your legs when you cross your legs. It's it so does. small. It's yeah. just a speck too long if you're sitting upright in a chair yeah. at a 90 degree angle or somewhere close to that. It's just a little bit too long. When you're in your I house, I know though, my legs you are not short. <laughs> Do you have a? I, I use uh, computers in front of the TV a lot, but I, yeah. we have these little coffee table type things this that we would be use, fine like for the, that. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Right. I mean, no, it's fine and I love that. I love the fact that this, like all the new surfaces, is uh, infinite tilt on yeah. the, on the back. That is great. 
all the so angles you can get any angle that you, you can want. get. Yeah. Yep, that's yeah. really yeah. nice. Isn't that nice? Yeah. Um, and you know what? Even though this isn't lappable, it's what's really different to me from other surfaces is how much better weighted this is. And I noticed that when I had just a few brief minutes of hands-on with it. But the other ones are so tippy because they're not weighted correctly right. for whatever reason. But this one... Like you can hold it in one hand or even just like, eh, and it's not like, yeah, yeah. ah, you know. Unfortunately, though, the way they made that happen was they left out the battery. <laughs> yeah, I know. The battery's tiny, you know, right? That's it, the problem. Okay, what, what are you getting for battery life, Leo, I haven't in the really real world? I have taxed it, but I think it's it's about four or five hours. Yeah, yeah that's um. Yeah. Well, with it not being 1998, that's actually not very good. Really? Mm. You, you would want more? You could put well, an arm I mean, chip in here and it'd go all day. That's the thing. How, how much battery life does an iPad Pro get? Nine, ten oh, hours? Ten hours, yeah. Solid. Yeah. A solid ten. Right. I mean, that's just that that that's a yeah. problem. Right. So Microsoft says nine hours. So when I heard that, I'm like, okay, I always get half of what yep. they say. So I was guessing four to five, and that's what I'm getting. Four to five. And okay, what am I running to get four to five? Tweet deck, Skype, notepad, of course. Um I'm really not yes. doing much. And I'm getting four to five. Yeah. And it's, I've seen other people say they're getting, getting seven, eight. I'm like, okay, I don't know how you're just watching people, videos. No, no. If people, you just watch, people are saying that. If you just watch yeah. Netflix on there, you'd get, you'd probably get six yeah, or seven yeah, or eight, maybe. Right. But, but I mean, if you're doing real things and switching back and forth, yep. and it's a nice you know. screen. I really like the screen. It is a nice screen. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, I, yeah, it is interesting that they couldn't get more battery in here since the iPad does. But the iPad yeah. is also using a custom ARM-based chip that's right, really designed right. to low power i don't know what this pentium gold is right. but all right so here's yeah, the I thing so for the i'm sorry the ipad is a, a, co a perfect combination of performance and battery life and yep. excellent screen yep mm -hmm. um this is it's a high bar for for microsoft i'm sorry we know that mm -hmm. yes yeah. it is a very high bar and you know, they're priced at the same if somebody needs you know the advantage it has the ipad can only get stuff from the uh, apple store this is a real windows machine did you turn off S right away, Mary Jo? No, I'm still running Windows 10 S. I guess, why not? I mean, you're not going to use Chrome. Because <laughs> you want to no, use you know, Chrome. No, I, I cool. want to run this the way that I think many people who get who go get right. this or their schools buy it for them or their companies right. buy it for them, they're going to run 10 S. They're not going to be running I think That's true. I really don't. I, I like the very first thing any school or business is going to do is switch it right out of 10s because the apps yeah, they need really? to run do not run in S. Yes. Well, if they have specialized apps, of course, yeah. Yeah. If they, if they, if they do have some they specialized app, they will have to do that. Um, but I'm so far running it in 10s. And the reason, one of the reasons I wanted to do that was to compare Edge. And remember I was having, when I was running um, the HP MVX2 with mm -hmm. Edge, I was like, I don't know what's wrong with Edge on ARM, but it's terrible. Um, this is better than that. Yeah, this is pretty usable. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> See, that's the that, that to me is the most interesting comparison here is the Surface yeah. Go compared to the HP MVX2 uh, yeah. across the board, all kinds of different things. Um, yeah. I don't know if you saw this, and I think this, I think this is since the last Windows Weekly. But I, I when I came out to Sweden, I intended to test browsers, you know, other browsers, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, alternate browsers, and everything. And in the course of syncing passwords and uh, favorites and things between different browsers. Mm -hmm. I started using Microsoft Edge in RS5. And I got to say, I do feel like this is the version where they kind of finally got it right. Like it's, mm -hmm. I could actually use this. Mm -hmm. And so that combination is actually very interesting all of a sudden. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's not super fast, right? And no, you, it's you a little faster the than the NV2. But yeah. Uh, but man, I had such a bad experience with Edge on ARM. I was just like, wow. Like, what's wrong with that combination of things? Well, there's like the trade-off. If you go ARM, you can get all-day yeah. battery life, but bad performance. Yeah. If you want... <laughs> if you go this one, you can get bad performance <laughs> and, and no battery life. No battery life. Yeah, it isn't, it's, it it's isn't great. It's yeah. not great performance. Yeah. It's, it's kind of NV2. What is... The chat room saying that the, the Pentium Gold is essentially an underclocked Core M. Is that accurate? I mean, how do yeah, you I characterize think it, this? I think... Yeah, and, and a, a, it's a dual core. Well, that's good. Uh, chip. It's not a quad core like the uh, yeah, the upper level. Dual core is what we've stuff. been used to for a long time, mm -hmm. and you know, dual core is is fine for productivity tasks and so forth. It, it, you could make yeah. the argument that a dual core, or whatever, would be fine in this PC for Word and you know Excel and web browsers and whatever. It's fine. There's nothing wrong with it. 
Um, but it's a Pentium, and it's kind of weird. It's just kind of an unknown. It, it's a when you hear Pentium Gold, the first reaction should be, "What is that?" It, it's right. something that should not be familiar to anybody. That's <laughs> yeah, meaningless. Is, is it Atom? It, it's not quite Atom. It's more. No, uh, remember the uh, the Surface Three was an Atom, right? Mm -hmm. It was an Atom. I think it and was. And it was yeah. garbage. It was terrible performance. This is a step or two up from that. I, I, I want to say the raw processing performance is something like 2x. The graphics performance of this system is better than that of Surface Pro 3, supposedly. Um, your systems are both are optimal in, in that you have the SSD, yeah. which will really help, um, and more RAM, which will really help as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But, yeah, yeah, I mean, I... I mean for, as far as like productivity tasks, like you're saying, I mean, everything works fine if you want to just do basic things, you know, like I'm not seeing lagging and typing or anything like that. And, and, you know, that's, that's what a lot of people will do with this, right? They'll do basic Word, Excel, yeah. maybe PowerPoint. I, um, you um, know, I, I feel like there's this matrix that you kind of go through with every decision mm -hmm. and you just want to talk about tech products. Like what are the things that are most important to you? You know, yep. there's going to be the performance issue, the battery life, just the portability of it. The fact that you might be able to yep. slip this into a purse or something, or if, so, if you have, I have or, and can, yeah, yeah, which is incredible. Right. Mm -hmm. I mean, or as a man, you know, um, I'm not going to wear a, like, a, I'm not going to bring like a man purse cause I'm not European, but you know, the ability to carry less, to have a mm -hmm. smaller bag, to have a lighter bag is, mm -hmm is huge. It's the dream, you know, back from the days of the libretto, remember the little tiny PCs. I, I've always dreamed of being able to do this thing. My freakish physical form prevents it, but you know, I, I would love to have a smaller computer, but it, it depends on what's important to you. Um, it does. I, I, it totally I does. think that I, I have not used it yet, but I've used it, but I've not, you know, I have it for, for mm -hmm. review yet, but I think the perform, the level of performance would be perfectly acceptable. It sounds like it's just North of the Qualcomm stuff right now. Mm -hmm. If, the battery life was a little bit better. You know, you don't have to hit 22 hours or 20 hours. Right. Could you hit eight hours? Right. You know, <laughs> that, that this conversation would be very different if that was part of the, the matrix. And it's not. Yeah. Unfortunately, the battery life sounds like it's pretty terrible. You know, what, so on the charging side, there's a couple of good pieces of news, which is one, the connector, the surface connector is way lighter and smaller. So I'm like, okay, I would actually throw that in my bag and not feel like I'm lugging this super heavy. Yeah. And the, pr so the prong is on the little brick, right? Like it was it on is. Surface 3. Yeah. 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 So it's a smaller thing. It's like you've got the one length of cable, not the two. Right. Um, right. Which yeah. is actually, you know, can be convenient. Have yeah. um, What about fast charging? Have either of you noticed how quickly it takes to charge yeah, it back to strength? It's quick. Um, I think I had it down pretty close to zero and I think it came back in like 45, 40, 45 minutes all the way. That, I mean, it's astonishing. Yeah. 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 That it was helps. Really fast. That, actually, that really helps. Yeah, it does. That's, it does. Because then when it's out of battery, you're like, oh, yeah. <laughs> Do you have to use the, um, the Surface Prong? <laughs> whatever, whatever. No, no you, you can you, use you, USB C. I tried that too. And if, it does it fast charge on USB C? My okay. So my it, understanding of that one is, if it is above a certain wattage level, it will. Yeah. And I think that Let me try might this. be sixty-five. It's some. It's something I like know. that. I used I'm my um, Envy charger to charge it. Yeah, yeah right, that's fine. the thing is I have Type C yeah. everywhere, and I'm i rarely gonna, yeah. I don't even have the Surface charger with me. Yeah. I actually forgot. We went on a side trip, and I forgot the charger for my laptop. And I was like, oh, God, mm -hmm. what am I going to do? <laughs> it's the first time I've ever done this on a trip. But my wife has a USB-C, you know, so it was fine. I yeah, love USB-C. I'm, I'm, thank yeah. God Microsoft yeah. finally saw the light there. Yeah. Yep. I, I don't know. I keep go, going back and forth, like, do I need this thing? You know, It's like, a second I, computer. It's aggressively a second it computer. It's not your it primary is. device. No, no. I've seen people saying, yeah, maybe I could make it my only computer. I don't think you could. No, um, you wouldn't want, you could. You wouldn't you want could. to. You could. Yeah, you could. You'd be unhappy. Um, I no. feel like that's the wrong conversation, though, because the, the people <laughs> that would use this, uh, who are kind of enthusiast types or human beings or whatever. It is a second computer. It's, I don't want my home stuff on my work computer. It's, I want to bum around the house with this yeah. other little thing. Um, the other people that use this are going to be in vertical markets. They're going to be out in the field. They're going to be on a factory floor. They're going to be students, you know, yeah. it, it's designed for very specific scenarios. It's, it, it's it nice because it's windows and you can kind of run anything on it if you want to. 
but it's you know it's still kind of it, the form factor is just I think a little too compromised. Yeah. Yeah, you know, for the full mail deal. This is uh, that's know, exactly I, what Ed Bot said. That we had him on Twit on uh, Sunday, mm -hmm. and he said, "This is this is this is the computer for somebody who doesn't, you know, has maybe a PC on the desk in the living room because mm -hmm. they've had it forever, but they don't they're yeah. not doing anything s hardcore with it at all. Maybe a little banking, maybe you know, a little surfing, yeah. whatever. This is this is is a reasonable." only computer for that kind of person a, a mm -hmm. light a light duty user yeah you want to sit in front of the tv and it's you know, great maybe for in front of the check tv email and browse yeah. or whatever and, and yeah. i got the pen and i got the mouse and all that stuff mm -hmm. and i it, you did uh, yeah, yeah. The, it's, I nice. Didn't get any of it. it's nice have actually, you tested the performance of the pen does it, there seem to be any lag seem to be any lag yeah. No, it's, I mean, I'm not an artist. You should, you know, you should. No, try but it, you but. can. But just the simple act of drawing a line on the screen, you can. If you go into like Sketchpad, um, yeah. uh, which you might have to bring up. Well, okay, there you go. Yeah. I See, mean, it, it, it's. I don't know what it looks like on video, but that's 100 percent following. No, that looks up. Good. Right. I was yeah. just going to yeah. say on video. There's something about videotaping this where it kind of tends to lag. It doesn't look like it's lagging no, at all. But not at all. You, you can see that in video. Yeah, see, and it's, yeah, no, it's it feels good. I think it's... Um, yeah, yeah, I th I th that's good. That's something yeah. Microsoft does really well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, that's... Uh, now, it's a it's giant. Compa I mean, it's, a it's, it's the whole size. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's the, it's the height. <laughs> they didn't of make the a special, special little one, uh, but yeah, I guess, yeah, you, you know, that's fine. your existing one. Yeah. yeah. And, yeah. Uh, yeah, you could. This is exactly the same as the uh, new mm -hmm. Surface uh, pen. Yep. yep. I How's love the, the magnet? The it's magnet really good. strong? It's good and strong, yeah. It's not falling off. pick up the device by holding the pen? <laughs> no, you can't. It's not that strong. But can you, can... you balance it on one finger while picking no, up the pen? No, but, <laughs> but it doesn't. I put it in my backpack, you know, and I'm doing yeah. it carefully, but I, but I, right. and I put it pen up. It doesn't fall yeah. off. It stays right there. So, um, I mean, it's a really nice portable little device. Yeah. And it, so, that's yeah. the thing. I, that's yeah. going to be really appealing to some people. Yeah. Yeah. The mouse uh, is is nice and slim, and it actually, yeah. if I would recommend if somebody's going to try to use this as a primary machine, you get the mouse because that just makes it a little bit. What you're showing right now is really interesting because you can see the color coded type cover, the pen, and the mouse, and and this is in hardware what the plus packs used to be. Remember for like yeah, Windows ninety five yeah, yeah, and Windows yeah, ninety eight. Right, yeah. It was just it was it was kind of just a way to personalize the whole experience. And people would kind of poo-poo that, but I always thought, you know, I don't think you understand how important that is to people. Yeah. Um, this ability to do what you're doing there with the color coding, um, it, it, it makes it kind of yours in a way that is just an all-silver computer in it kind of isn't. Yeah. True. I think. Thanks, thanks for highlighting. That. Yeah. Right. This is this is, <laughs> what we're, this is the most important thing. We're, wow. Look at that color. I'm getting some interesting. Uh, I don't know what I have. I, well, I, I can rainbow speak pen. to the. Um, uh, I love to, this. One notes. One note is thinking that's a Sweden, like instantaneously. <laughs> oh, really? You're seeing it? <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's yeah, yeah, hysterical. Lying. I forgot. This is. Yeah, a, we are. Seeing I didn't know it. I had edit. <laughs> no, no, it's funny. Like as you do that, P it is literally appearing live on my on my it screen. Is. But that's Thanks. nice. That's collaborative, right? Yeah. Yep. yeah. That's actually what you want. So let's t let's yep. talk about this. Okay. <laughs> Oops. Crossed it out. I just crossed it. <laughs> wrong. Wrong. I do love the eraser. This is something Apple does not do and they really should do. Let's, so let's, the Microsoft supports two types of, ra of erasers, right? You could do the the kind of a swipe erase where it erases the entire stroke. Right. Or you can do like a normal eraser where it kind of just yeah. erases it, whatever yeah. you touch. Yeah. So if I do this, oops. That's... Yeah. Well, you just touch it. All you have to do is touch it. Just touch it. In other it. words, like, yeah, uh, yeah, that's the the mode you're in right now, so... Yeah, because it's, uh, it it's an object. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Do I press the button to get the other mode, or no? I think if I you just, look up at the I eraser, there's it. a little down arrow on it. You have to it, when you choose it, uh, uh, yeah, hold, yeah. press it, hold, and you should oh, get yeah. a list of options there. Yeah, yeah. There's a down. It might it might not be available in OneNote, but this is something like in it the, isn't. There's only one way yeah, to do it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Although you notice yeah. when I had this kind of thing, it was it was erasing. Oops. Somehow I somehow I got it to erase in pieces. When, oh, when I was writing to you. I mean, maybe. Yeah, I saw that. I thought yeah. so. Well, in, in, in an app like Sketchpad, you, right? you can choose. If you pick how, up the pen, it's in pieces, so. See. Well, that's oh, true. yeah, that's yeah. it. In a pen, it does it in pieces. Yeah, so you don't have... Oh, you're, you're yeah, doing, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm do, still doing or, objects, but because I lifted it. Yeah, yeah. I see what you're saying. In other yeah. words, you're, you're so cus accustomed to erasing right. that you're, you're kind of erasing it, but it's not really strictly necessary. Mm -hmm. Like, you could tap each stroke with it. Yeah. yeah. 
It's hard not to race it, isn't it? Like you, you want to, you want to like race it. It's so fun. No, I, I, this, to me, this illustrates actually the real primary use, especially for a student. It's a great OneNote device. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. and uh, it's just the right size. You might turn it in, in you know, do it in uh, portrait mode, mm-hmm. but it's just oh, the wait, right size. What did, what did you think of the keyboard? I, you know, this is very much like the uh, NVX2 keyboard. It's that same thing where it's it's got the little magnetic thing on the bottom, so it kind of tilt tents up yeah. just like the surface. I like that. And, yeah. and but you can do it either way. And when you do it, if you right. don't like the give when you type, putting it on a solid surface. Now, when I type, it's yeah. got. Some, sorry about that. Yep. It's got some. <laughs> <laughs> it's got some. So, by the way, the syncing is fairly unbelievably quick. Uh, it's really quick. <laughs> you know, isn't that really cool? Quick. That's so cool. It's kind of impressive. Yeah. Um, yeah, now, it was weird though. When I first got it last Thursday, and I took it out, put the keyboard on. The first like hour I typed, I couldn't type any words. Like I'm like, I can't type. Like none of the words what? are working, and like I'm typing everything wrong, and like I couldn't. Oh, because you used to could, the yeah, yeah. But you got used to it. Are you talking about the oh, small that, keycaps? That, that's yeah. Good. Is it because it's small or because of the key throw? I think it's because um, it's small. I, yeah, I think it's small because I, I, I touch type. Because, I, I can touch yeah. type really fast. Yeah. And so I was trying to just type like I normally do. You just do, get better like, at ah. aiming. You just get better so, at aiming. But you're right. The, the travel is an issue. But I think we're getting more because fewer and fewer keyboards uh, on portable devices have decent travel. Yeah. Well, but this yeah. but this thing actually does have decent travel. It's much better than the MacBook. Isn't that funny? Oh, yeah. It's not even close. Yeah. yeah. I, I it, The size would, is an issue for me. The key throw is not an issue. I, I, I actually, yeah. I think this came up recently. You know, there's something, it's weird. As, as computers have evolved. I, I'm kind of a pre. There's a there's a happy medium, obviously, but the Apple stuff is too short. I think the mo- most modern computers are too long, and then these kind of things. This is like 1.1 millimeter, probably somewhere in that range. Most keyboards are 1.4, 1.5, maybe. I actually think that the, the key throw on this might be semi ideal. Hmm. It's just they're too small. So Alex came in and, and demonstrated that I can tap this and choose the eraser. I don't know. Why. I thought so. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I don't know why I wasn't doing it. <laughs> Maybe because I was, oh, maybe I was doing it with the eraser. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Whatever. It wasn't, but now it is. But yeah, so you have the yeah. two, yeah, so you do have the two eraser yeah. types, yeah. Mm-hmm. So you can erase it normally if that's what you want. Mm-hmm. I think you can I've messed totally up delete all the notes. It's fine. No, don't worry about it. <laughs> no, I'm sorry. I'm trying, <laughs> trying to undelete do everything that. I've done here. Oh. Uh, no, no, I think it's actually, it's, like I said, it is kind of amazing to me. Yeah. How quickly, because I see it. You're seeing it in it. Sweden. You're yeah. seeing... Yeah. And I'm seeing it's it crazy. too, so, yep. Now, aren't you sorry you gave me edit uh, permissions on the... Yeah, yeah. actually, did, did we do that on purpose? <laughs> How did that happen? Uh, I think you might have made a mistake. That, <laughs> I think you're now regretting it. That's right. I, I, I believe in the restorative powers of OneDrive. Let's hope. <laughs> Wait a minute. Oh, where's That's my... Good. Where's my... I'd like the back. Where's my front-facing camera? Oh, here yeah, it is. Yeah, you got to choose the yeah. camera. Well, yeah, Windows Hello works very well on this, um, if that's something people care about. How do I get... Are you using it, you mean, for the camera? I want to get a picture of me. Yeah, it works. You know what? It does work well. Yeah. It does. Yeah. yeah. It's recognized me about nine times out of ten. Now, it, uh, when I, I trained it at first with glasses, and then it, and then it yeah, didn't recognize me. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, but now it recognizes me. So I, I really like Hello. Is it secure, though? I mean, how, how much should I trust it? No, it's secure. Is it? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. It can't be fooled by photos or pictures or whatever. Yeah. It's a it's a sure a great way to log it's in. It's not a Samsung product, Leo. It's fine. <laughs> 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 uh, yeah, touch a, screen for anyone who cares about that. I have yet to touch my screen on this thing, but yeah. Oh, stop it. What, I have are, not. What? I don't use touch on a laptop. Uh, there you go. <laughs> I don't need it. I don't want it. I probably get way better battery life without it. So I'm just saying. putting a little picture of myself in here so you don't forget. In case we sure. forgot what you look like. In case you forget who I who I am. <laughs> there you go. Oh, well, you'll, you'll be happy. No, you'll ha- be happy to hear that I am also using a touch screen. <laughs> oh, you are on an iPad. Yeah. Uh, no, on a real computer. <laughs> okay. And. Um, <laughs> 
what that means. Let's see. Can you mess with me? <laughs> oh, I can't. I don't know why it's not letting me. Because you don't have edit privileges. I took them away, the yeah. rat. What, what's happened? Oh, no. <laughs> it's fun. This is fun. Like a little tiny Leo. Oh, it it's reloading put him, the fire. Put right here. Oh, yeah. You probably, it probably takes a while for you to get the... Uh, it get takes the, a little while, but not much of a little while. I'm getting it already. Isn't that cool? Yep. Oh, she's yep. stuck on a huge drink. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We t we're having too much fun. Um, Teardown so reveals tiny battery. What? Oh, look. Somebody's drawing so, drawing in my... You bastard! No! <laughs> uh. So, um, yeah. Uh, not surprisingly, given the battery life you guys are seeing... Uh, the iFixit teardown revealed that the battery is approximately the same size as a smartphone battery. And that explains the battery life. Mm -hmm. Why would they put such a tiny battery in? Come on. Is there no room in the air? Yeah, I have not, to guess that's right? what it is, right? <laughs> yeah. It's uh, yeah. kind of a shrunken down Surface Pro, <laughs> basically, and there probably wasn't a lot I think of room. If there are any defects on this, you can blame Intel, basically. <laughs> I, I have said that so many times about so many things. Um, <laughs> Back in back in the Surface Pro Surface Pro two days, there was a battery keyboard, and I think that this device would benefit yeah, greatly from was. that. So in other words, that's right. Yeah, the type mm -hmm. cover has a battery in it, right? Now it would add mm -hmm. weight and thickness and all that kind of stuff. I get it, but uh, if battery life was a concern and you really needed to use this as a sort of a mini laptop, I I really think that kind of peripheral would be useful. Yeah. Hmm. Mm -hmm. They also gave it a poor repairability score, but you know what? Welcome to the. 21st okay. century. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I, I'm just curious if the audiences this is targeted at are going to bite on this. Schools, um, first line workers, so companies buying them in bulk for first line workers. You need like a special case if you want it to be break proof for schools and for people in the front line, right? You wouldn't just leave it with the yeah. type cover. No, and that's what Apple did for their school iPad. They have this big hard rubber device yeah. actually logitech sells it so mm -hmm. so that's going to be something else you would factor into the price of this yeah, there's no room in there is there i, I feel like this say, thing's going to be great this is not cheap by the way Every, i've saw so many headlines saying such a cheap device i'm like okay i paid 730 dollars for the type cover and this and this device that's a lot of money yeah, yeah but okay. yeah all right so do, do you all right so you just raised two big issues so it's for it, with regards to the price what this is, is when a luxury car maker wants to you know, open up the market to a bigger audience, they release a lower mm -hmm. end version that's right. roughly the same price as the higher end version of a, like a Toyota or Honda or something, right? And so in the United mm -hmm. States, Mercedes is this summer, this year is released like an A-series sedan for the first time in this country they've had in, in Europe forever. It's going to cost about $35,000. Very expensive. But that's the average price of a new car these days. Mm. So it's if you kind of want to get into this kind of a thing, it's it's a way for you to get into the, into a Mercedes much more cheaply than it would typically be mm. possible. And I think this does that for the PC market. You know, yeah. I think there is an, there's a, uh, you know, they're not stepping on PC maker toes, right? If people right. want to mm -hmm. buy a cheap computer, those things exist. But if you want something that's uh, uh, premium, here's this thing. And, and it, it's, mm. It is a premium computer. It's kind of a weird thing. It's because it's kind of a premium mid-market computer or a premium mm -hmm. low-end computer. It's kind of a, it's almost an oxymoron. But I think I don't know. I think I think it's a thing. And and the the other thing that you said though was about whether it's going to be successful, whether this market exists. The thing mm -hmm. we're kind of losing sight of maybe is that Microsoft does not sell many computers. Their sure. market share is something like one point something 1%. or two point something yeah. at most. It's tiny. So. Yeah. Opening this market to a wider audience is kind mm -hmm. of a low bar, you know. And I actually do think that from if they if they want to sort of play a little bit in the volume part of the market, this is a step in that direction. Yeah. Because the yeah. the nine ninety nine entry level price of a typical Surface is beyond the means of most people. The two thousand dollar cost of an actual nice Surface is well beyond yeah. the means of most. True. You know, I yeah. could never buy a Surface book. I can't afford that kind of computer. Yeah. No, yeah. I would. I mean, I love it, but I can't. I could never afford to buy that. Thing. Yeah, yeah. I went in. So I went on the day it went on sale in the morning to the uh, Microsoft New York flagship store, smart. and there was a crowd of people around the table. 
looking at it. <laughs> I don't think they were yeah. actors or Microsoft employees. I think they were <laughs> actual customers. Actual people. All right, Alex um, Jones, settle down. But then <laughs> I'm at the desk yep. buying mine, and th I'm the only one. Like, yeah. oh, it wasn't flying off the shelf or yeah. anything. You know, yeah. there was no line for for it. So, yeah, I mean, we'll, we'll see. Yeah, I mean, I we we do live in the 21st century. I mean, people want this stuff ordered. Or it. They, yeah. it came in on, on you know through Amazon or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll see. Yeah, it I was just, funny because when I, did, I bought it, when I bought it, um, the woman who sold it to me goes, "Oh, you got the silver one." I'm like, "Well, they're all silver." But <laughs> <That's yeah. amazing. laughs> that is amazing. Whoops! <laughs> <laughs> nice choice, Mary Jo. But then she's like, I oh, but you got color. the type cover. I'm like, yeah, I did. <laughs> it was cute. Wow. <laughs> was uh, this the Fifth Avenue store in New York? Yeah. 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 Nice. So, in other words, that's the first one she sold. I, maybe. <laughs> or Probably, everybody's yeah. getting the silver one. Everybody, yeah. Everybody <laughs> it's a really popular one. <laughs> everybody loves that silver. It's yeah. Yeah, since you like this, you might like some silverware. <laughs> Am I imagining things, Mary Jo, or did it not come with 1803 installed? I it see. So it came with 1803, but then there was right away a firmware update. I um, had that, three or four. I had a bunch yeah, of. Yeah, I got them. a bunch of updates. Yeah. yeah. So I those, got a cumulative update to it. I got so a firmware update. That's the way it should work. But what you're seeing is normal, right? So yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You always there happened that. to be a Surface uh, Go Day One firmware update, but it was just for the UEFI. Yep. Um, you're always going to get a cumulative update that will bring it up to date with this month. Mm -hmm. There, are, there are going to be defender or updates. There's going to be. Uh, so maybe you know, I was seeing something that said 1803, but it was like an 1803 cumulative yeah. update. But that's it was right. yeah. okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Leo, I can assure you, a version update on this thing is going to take about eight days. So <laughs> if you, you know, if if you didn't have 1803, you'd still be installing. The it. updates went fairly, yes, uh, fairly smooth. Yeah. 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 I'm actually, uh, I'm a fan. I'm a fan. Yeah. I don't. I haven't used it as a tablet. Have you? Like just. Yeah. You know what I've used it for? Uh, and a tablet is. Uh, I put the New York Times crossword puzzle on it. Mm -hmm. So Leo, if you don't mind, this might be an interesting performance test. Um, just bring up like the New York Times website because that's a fairly complex website. Or you could just use our show notes if you wanted. And yeah, on camera, rotate the screen. Oh, mm -hmm. ooh, you're being. Yep. Oh, you're being. Right. Actually, uh, yeah. The Verge is the one I always use for this. The Verge is, yeah, the, something... is the piggiest site in history. Yeah. All right. And, I mean, it, and, and to be fair to the computer, maybe unplug the, the keyboard just to make it. Just you know, to make it really a challenge, challenge huh? Yeah, just to, okay, ready? Just I, th this is a performance issue for Windows in general. Yeah. Yeah, yeah look at that. <laughs> That's that wasn't oh, bad. No. That actually isn't that bad. That was not bad. <laughs> that wasn't, that and it's scrolling that sucker, which is normally a very challenging yeah, thing. Yeah. That little thing that it does, where it kind of sucks Sque it a little yeah, bit, squeezes it and makes it change. I this uh, yeah, it's often very very slow on Windows. Yeah. So I I will say I for a computer, that was not bad, not yeah, terrible. I think that it's was pretty terrible. good. Now, uh, mine is not even when I detach the keyboard does not go into tablet mode, which I thought was kind of interesting. Yeah, so let's find out why. Um, go into settings. Oh, here we go. This is my favorite part of the show. When Paul helps <laughs> Leo figure out how to run Windows. I love this part. Right, let's find out why. <laughs> let's go into set. I need to put a keyboard on here. I can't do that without a keyboard. Yeah, it's easier on the keyboard. It's a lot yeah, easier. A lot that? easier. Oh, hello. Keyboard in. Keyboard inserted. Hello. Keyboard. Oh, I didn't get it all the way in. It's got, a, by the way, a strong keyboard magnet on this thing. Yeah, it does. Yeah, they yeah. changed it for this one. Yeah, it's really tough. Okay, Oops. settings. System. Let me turn down the brightness so you, go, you all can play along with, with the home version of the game. Uh, system. Uh, system. System. The top one. Top, top one. System. Okay. And then tablet mode. Um, about halfway down there. So. Use the appropriate mode for my hardware. That's don't amazing. ask me and but, don't switch. But now this is the default. I didn't change it. So I, okay. what I want Literally, is ask. Hold on a second. Do you, do you mind actually? Could you zoom in a little bit? I'm just curious. That that's not what normally is there. I don't. I don't know how to zoom in. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> uh, it right, says so. use the appro the the default because I never change this. Is use the appropriate mode for my hardware when I sign in. Oh, that's when I sign in. I'm sorry. I, uh, so um, that's the, normal. The thing I, uh, that's fine. I, what I want is I'm sorry. I meant the next one done. It don't says, ask when this me device and don't switch. Don't ask me and that's not the default. The default should be Always. unless they changed it. 
always ask me before yeah, switching. That's so on a, on, I didn't change it. So I I think Mary Jo, you should look at yours. But um, should look. Yeah. So ask me before switching, and now when I detach the keyboard, do I? Have it to, should ask. It should ask when you did keyboard. It should right. say, "Oh, do you want to?" Yeah. Now it's no. That's saved to wonder. Yeah, here it is. You got it. And now it's doing so. That. It seems to me on a device like this, like if I if I was actually going to use this, I would probably want this to be in tablet mode when it was in almost all like the time. That. Yeah, I would think so because it's so, so so small, right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I would think so. Yeah, so I'm gonna leave it in tablet mode. Yeah, mine doesn't automatically switch to it either. Okay, so that's something. But that Microsoft changed that from the normal Windows 10 default, is it's, my understanding. Yeah, yeah, hmm. it's doing that on purpose. Maybe because people don't use it as a tablet. Maybe. Remember, you guys, Therat was the one who found that internal Microsoft document where it said how few people took the keyboard off, right? Oh, <laughs> interesting. Does. Yeah. In two and ones, two and one Windows, well, at least Surface devices, I believe it was like a really tiny number who ever detached a keyboard. Like, even if I'm watching a movie, I leave the keyboard on because I'm always ready to type something at a moment's notice. This, the only time I do it is when I'm doing the New York Times oh. crossword. Yeah. And I'm sitting in front of the TV or I'm doing something else. And it's it's actually yeah. a really great experience for the crossword <clears throat> because mm -hmm. it also supports pen. Because what mm -hmm. you get is the full screen kind yeah. of thing. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's nice. And you can even I, I, I can <laughs> zoom in. I, I think there are the, the two pieces of evidence to support what Mary Jo just said are Microsoft no longer bundles the pen with any Surface, basically, mm -hmm. uh, other than I think Surface Studio, but any portable Surface. And... With the previous generation of devices, although you notice they just stopped doing this, everything that was a Surface was a laptop, right? Right. That was the marketing for the previous generation of products. Well, actually, the current generation of products minus this new one. It was the laptop that blah, 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 whatever. The, they were all laptops. They were kind of creating this fiction that Surface Pro was a laptop. And it might be because that's what they saw from the usage. You know, we can call this thing a, the tablet that can replace your laptop, but the reality is it's a laptop that can replace your laptop. Mm. So it's great. You can see it's great for a, for a yeah. uh, crossword. This is, and I'm yeah, handwriting and it's recognizing. Good. Yeah, it's great. Yeah. It's, this is actually, uh, they have, I have exactly the same program in the iPad. This is my preferred way to use it. And you add yeah, the wow. performance is, is, is very nice. Yeah. Yeah. It looks good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, and I like it that you can zoom in. You can see that there's no hesitation on that at all. And I don't, yeah, I don't, great. I doubt that the New York Times is doing anything saying, "Oh, yeah, this is uh, we got to mm -hmm. do something because it's on a different thing." I mean, this this really works. So if if it's if you want a four hundred, I'm sorry, five hundred fifty dollar crossword puzzle machine, <laughs> this man, is it. Man, two thumbs up, a thumb and a pencil up. Yep. Yep. <laughs> But actually, that know, was one of the, that was one of my primary uses. For this. It was. Yeah. <laughs> that was actually my use case. That's fine. That's, you know, I like crosswords. <laughs> you know why I think I might keep this device though, even though I don't technically need it, is there's always times when I'm like, I want to have a laptop with me, even though I probably won't use it. But I'm afraid if I don't have it with me, news will break, or I'll need to yeah, see yeah, something yeah. on a bigger yeah. screen. So you can head you but, can head out into the world. Right. And, and it's there. Yeah, it's a, a pound plus, right? So you throw it in your bag and it's like, oh yeah, okay, it's there. And it's like a little peace of mind kind of thing. And also it would be good for us for taking notes, like if you're in a meeting and you that you, you know, like yeah. all I need to do is take a quick couple notes and yeah. I don't want to get a stylus all out right, or use a phone. Ig you know? Ignite, com maybe Ignite's not a good example. Let's say uh, no, uh, Microsoft yeah. has an event in New York and you right. can walk there from your place. Right. And um, do you bring that? No, yeah, if no? I have to do real work, I bring a laptop. Oh, interesting. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. I but think there I are going to be a lot of people work, who are going to try to make this work. <laughs> yeah, I feel like I feel like because it's not lappable enough, I would go with the laptop. And also, I like you know everybody's going to laugh at me when I say this, but when I bought my laptop, I bought it with a Cora i seven. Um, and yeah. everyone's like, "Oh, why? Because you run Notepad?" I'm like, "No, because <laughs> well, you, do, because you write really quickly." I know, and I want to use the browser at a fast pace. Like, I don't want to wait for the browser. Like, sometimes I really need the browser to be fast. And I know that sounds like a first world problem, but I feel like that is why I need a, a real laptop sometimes. Yeah, that's... A, I, I don't have to explain that to me. I, no, that's yeah, fair, I get it. Perfectly fair. Yeah. yeah. 
Although if you used Edge, it's much more. Uh, <laughs> I am yeah, using Edge. I'm making this, myself Edge use it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Actually, back when you bought this, Edge might not have even existed. Was this mm. a Windows 8 machine or, or when you bought it? The one you're talking about? Windows, was that is that the... Oh, Windows 7 was my original Acer. I mean, yeah, my Acer S7, right? I yeah. think it was a Windows so, yeah, 7. It was, was, yeah, it was a Windows 7 device, yeah. Wow. Yeah. We've yeah. come so far. Speaking of those uh, <laughs> firmware updates, that is... Uh, everybody should be getting those, right? Or all the surfaces, anyway. That is that Spectre? Well, is that... Almost... So, yeah, so... <laughs> this, uh, on Surface Book 2 the other day, there was this dump of what I, I believe was every single driver on the machine was replaced, like every single one. The list is like 37. It's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> and over the past week or so, we've seen that with not quite every Surface, modern Surface, but Surface Pro 4, the 2017 Surface Pro, Surface Laptop, Surface Book 2. And then uh, we've also seen smaller updates for just Surface Book, uh, sorry, Surface Pro 3 and Surface Go that is UEFI related that don't fall into this category. But my, with the other ones, Microsoft has specifically said this is to address the processor vulnerabilities that Intel found, you know, Spectre and, and Meltdown. And it, it is astonishing how many things are getting updated all at once. I don't believe there have ever been firmware updates for any Surface PC to match what we're seeing this month. Mm -hmm. It's It's crazy. I'm going to so they, start doing big check marks. Now I see those check marks next to every as we do every everything. I'm just going to do big check marks, so you'll just go boom, like and you'll done. know it's done. You done. Could actually, if you could make the the check mark like a little Leo photo. Oh, I just or maybe I'll get a rubber stamp of some kind. And, <laughs> yeah, like a little. Oh man, I'm going to mess with you guys now, boy. You're gonna you're gonna be sorry you gave me edit privileges. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> um, okay. Yeah, even Surface Go got a uh, got an update. We yeah, we all got just uh, for the firmware. firmware. Okay. Well, should, do we not have to worry about Spectre mitigation? I don't think we do. No, but there's no exploits out there, as far as I know. Well, the th the worry <laughs> actually is this kind of thing. So Microsoft just released replaced every single driver on their Intel based computers. Is this thing ten percent slower now? Oh. Right, because isn't you know, that the side effect? Maybe, of these? yeah. And good luck mm -hmm. trying to prevent a firmware update from coming down on a Surface device. Right, you know. <laughs> yeah. Right, right. So, yeah, I, that's the worry. I'm not I, honestly. Yeah. Am I worried about security issues? No, not right now. But um, the, uh, these fixes are impacting the performance of the computers we use. Right. Um, and so I don't know. They they they've never really discussed that angle, but. Mm. Um, these releases are mammoth. I, 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 like I said, they are historic in, in the scope of Surface. I've never seen anything like this. Mm -hmm. I've just drawn a graph of the. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> you like a, you're like a Stephen King story. <laughs> what is this? Uh, Cujo, the day the Go came alive. Is oh, that it's what like it is? The, you know, the, like like the uh, you're just like we we can't. We can't stop you from doing this. No, I'm the child. <laughs> so, I'm the children of yeah. the corn. Yeah. Yeah. Like, it's like, um, you just gotta, what are we going to do? Nothing. Just smile and keep going. Right? Yeah. I know. Normally it's the cats wrecking the notes. Putting it away. Yeah. Putting it away. <laughs> but it is fun. I mean, I have to say with the pencil, yeah. uh, the pen yeah, and, yeah. The, and the, I like that. It's fun. I'm not tempted to do that on the Lenovo. That's very much of a work device. But on the yeah. Well, the funny thing is, so I, the computer I'm using for this podcast is a Lenovo Um ThinkPad X1. Nice. Yoke. That's the one you brought. It's nice. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But I, I just had a little bit of trouble there playing with the pen thing. And I'm like, why isn't this working? And I I had just used Windows Inc. in Windows Mail on a touch-based computer. It worked fine with my finger. And on this one, it would not work. Huh. You actually mm -hmm. have to use the, or at least on this computer, I had to use the pen to make it work. Huh. Mm -hmm. So it took, me, it took me a second to figure out why it wasn't working. It comes it with the pen, I, though. It's right there in the little yeah, slot it does there. Yeah. yeah. Yep. And by the way, Paul... I, you'll be very happy to know that when you get tired of Windows, that X1 Yoga runs Linux beautifully. <laughs> beautifully. Mint. I, 
Do you, do you think I will get tired of Windows? <laughs> <laughs> no, I put uh, it. I, so I had the second generation uh, X1 Yogo. I think you have the third, right? You have the new one. It's one of the newest ones, yeah. Yeah, but I uh, on the second, uh, I, I have enough Windows machines now with the Surface Go. I thought, well, I can, uh, you know, that's the older one. I'm going to put, uh, uh, I put Entergos mm -hmm. Linux on it. Installed beautifully. Mm -hmm. That's the one with the OLED screen. It looks gorgeous. Which one is, which, which version? I use, uh, 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 it's a, Installer for Arch, so it's basically Arch Linux, which I'm a fan of. And but I don't like to. Arch is designed for. What was the name to, you said though? Antergos, which means ancestor. Antergo. Ancestor. Antergos. Okay. It's from Sounds Spain. Like hmm. But I really anybody who's looking for a Linux that installs nicely on a Lenovo a ThinkPad, <laughs> you know everything is hand. The only thing that it doesn't do the fingerprint reader, but that I'm not surprised because that's a security device. Yep. You know that's not going to have. Open yeah, drivers, TPM based. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. but uh, it's uh, it's and it it handled a high DPI. It's a gorgeous machine. I, I love it on uh, on the OLED. It's nice. beautiful. Yeah. All right, let's take a little break. We'll get back um, to talking about Windows. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to. I'm just I'm in a derailing <laughs> mood today. I don't. I apologize. Let me derail you one more time and talk about my favorite content management system. You don't you don't use this, right, Paul? You have to suffer with something else, or are you are you? Finally, no, no, I do use this. Oh, you finally That's what I, on yeah. the old site had had some awful CMS. You're happy to go to a WordPress. Jeez, oh, I used to, we used to. What was the thing we had? It was some some, some weird thing the super site was running on. I remember Cold, used Cold to, Fusion. We used to oh, have Cold so, Fusion. Oh, oh, you wrote it probably, oh, we, right? I wrote so I, the C the CMS I originally had at the super site. I wrote I wrote it in VB wow. Script uh, ASP Classic ASP. Wow. And then, uh, this, the company I worked for used uh, Cold Fusion, which was terrible. Ugh. Yeah. Uh, even though uh, it's really just Delphi. You know that, right? Do not dismerge. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. The uh, Bible. <laughs> the super Bible. <laughs> Still a classic. Still a classic. You know, this <laughs> Delphi 3 Super Bible is so big, it actually can cover Paul up entirely. I just yeah, put it, it holds up monitors really well. That's yeah. <laughs> a heavy, just, you know, heavy tone. Use it. In those days, you needed to know Chapter 40, T-Bevel. You oh, needed to know that. Well. Yeah. It's a good, that was a good chapter. Everything uh, descended from T-Object. Yeah. T-Object. Go back to page zero. I'm sure it's T-Object. It probably is, right? You have Based a page object. zero. You really are a geek. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Paul is absolutely right. Ladies and gentlemen, I give you T object. The very first the object. Ancestor of every Delphi class. Class of Delphi or something. Yeah, yeah. Everything you. So this really is just an, a, a reference manual. There's no actually no. Is it just a reference manual, Leo, <laughs> or is it. <laughs> Something is so much every, more is every uh, every single function and, and property and so, uh, is it all? Yeah. In the so end? the issue at the time was um, Berlin did not document this accurately or at all, and so this was actually at the time. Can you blame them? The only complete reference the, to the, their own yeah. class library. Wow, that's a lot, a lot of work. Holy thing. cow! Holy cow! And still a classic. I have. I'm proud to have a copy. So it's better uh, than the Bible. <laughs> uh, our show today brought to you by a more modern and yet at the same time uh, more popular, uh, even kind of more his, more historic content management system. It's been around since the the 2000s. I remember getting my first WordPress installation. Now, 31 percent of all the websites in the world run on WordPress. 31 percent. WordPress is the place to go if you need a website, whether for yourself. My, you know, my got finally got my kids getting their own site up, and I've always said this: if if you don't create your own presence on the web, somebody else will do it for you. So that when when they look for your name on the web, that they're in charge. The other people are in charge. You you need to make a, even. I think a great gift for a fourteen or fifteen year old parents would be a WordPress.com site. Get them started right. Uh, buy the domain name, you know, their name if you can get it, and uh, set up a web website and have them put like their best schoolwork on there, pictures of the soccer game, get them a little write, do a little writing, that kind of thing. Great way to create a presence on the web. I know a lot of people say, oh, I have a Facebook page. That's You don't own that. Mark Zuckerberg owns that. I don't know. Your Twitter feed, same thing. You don't, you need to have a place you control. It's your place. And man, if you're a business and you don't have a website, I feel like it's almost like not, you know, in the old days, if you didn't have a phone <laughs> or an answering machine, it's like that. You, you need to have a website. Before I do business with anybody, and I'm not, to, uh, the guys who clean the gutters, the gardener, 
uh, the repair guy, the insurance company, they, I'd go to the web to look up their listing. You don't want Yelp to determine your reputation on the net. You can do so much better. Go to WordPress.com. I know you've resisted because, well, it's hard, right? No. No, you don't need to know CSS or HTML, any technical stuff. They do it all for you. They make it very easy. You could choose from hundreds of designs to make to match your, you know, what you want, what you think of yourself, your create your image of yourself. Um, uh, it's funny because Abby ended up using the same template I did, just kind of coincidentally. But it's a very nice, flexible template. She was able to really, and she loves how it looks. It's completely hassle-free. WordPress takes care of the hosting, the security, the software updates. In fact, when I ran my own site, I did my own self-hosting, that was part of the problem was I was doing all of that and not blogging as much. And I wanted to, I wanted to put more content up there. Oh, and by the way, uh, you can put audio, you could put video, you can upload images, you can import and export content to and from your WordPress website. It's, it's your place. It's kind of fun. This, this is a great way to get your name out there, get your your look out there, get more business. Yes, you can do e-commerce, uh, everything from a simple and very effective buy button to like a whole store, and it is not expensive. It actually turns out to be less than I was paying to do my own self-hosted self WordPress. WordPress.com. They have a great app. You can manage your site in the go. Uh, it's it's easy, and, and when you need help, they're there 24-7 to give you a hand. WordPress plans start at just $4 a month. Get 15% off that new plan purchase, any new plan purchase, when you go to WordPress.com slash Windows. And you'll be telling them that you heard this on uh, Windows Weekly. WordPress.com slash Windows. 15% off your new website. No Delphi Super Bible required. Windows is the uh, is the keyword. Win WordPress.com slash Windows. And we thank them so much uh, for their support of Windows Weekly. And I thank the Delphi Super Bible for the support of my monitor. <laughs> <laughs> no, actually, I'm really glad to have this. But next time you're out here, i got to get you to autograph it. Yeah. And then we'll find Gary Brent, Richard Bagdasian, and Steve Tendon. Yeah. Do you stay in touch with the guys? Gary Brent, unfortunately, has passed away. Oh. Well. He was my, the guy who got me into writing. Really? Mm -hmm. Oh, that's neat. That's really nice. We pass on some wisdom from Gary because years after this, I asked him, I said, I'm just curious, like, what, why you thought I could become a writer? I had never written anything, that you'd never seen anything I'd written, certainly. And I, in waiting for him to, he was the smartest person I've ever known. So I thought this is going to be beautiful. And he said, I could just tell. <laughs> you were open for more. <laughs> I could tell. Like, you're useless. I looked at you and I said, that guy's a writer. He probably said that guy's a masochist. I think we can get him to write hundreds of books. Yeah. <laughs> how, how do you? What do you think about sitting in a cave for multiple hours and writing about nonsense that no one's ever going to want to read? I'm like, I like it. I bet you. I like. Where, I like where this is heading. I bet you, hundreds of people blessed your name. <laughs> hundreds <laughs> for writing. I think this. you were right. I think yeah. you were very accurate. At least accurate a hundred. At, at least a hundred. More in three figures easy. <laughs> So by the time that book came out, Mitchell Waite was a nut job. <laughs> the weight press. You know. I, I, you know, we've had Witch Mitch on because now he's a birder, right? He sure even is. sent me, I, I mentioned, yeah, I think that might take up birding. He sent me the the bookshelf of birding books. But he does the, his company does the all the big birding apps now. On, What's the uh, guy, um, Tim O'Reilly, I met, he wanted me to do a Windows Me book. And I was like, over my dead body. <laughs> <laughs> Tim that was said, a good that could Finally, be you said no to a book. Uh, yeah, it's kind of yep. stunning, isn't it? <laughs> Paul, keep up the good work. <laughs> All right. <laughs> now, everything's gone to sleep, and I don't know what we're doing next. Uh, sure. Too bad I don't have can't a, be a portable, quick, easy... Yeah, to if, if only there was some way. <laughs> to, 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 something <laughs> some that responded way. instantly <laughs> to mm -hmm. my every command. The pen went flying when I picked it up. Oh, dear. Oops. Uh, next, let's revisit the Microsoft... Managed desktop. That can't mm -hmm. be right. Didn't think we were going to be doing this a week later, but here we are. <laughs> Is this oh, what no. you talked about last week? We mm -hmm. did, but because of some current events, we need to talk about it again. <laughs> Mary Jo's going to be too polite here. Could I? Could I just maybe? No, no. Let me let me say my polite? piece, okay. and then you can right. jump in. Okay. So last week on the show, we talked about a story about this thing called the Microsoft Managed Desktop. Brad found the name 
um, in some Microsoft, I don't know, job posting or something. And then I dug around and found out what it was. So I wrote what I thought was a fairly clear blog post explaining this is something Microsoft's building out as an option for business customers where they would be able to buy the device, uh, get the regular Windows updating for the versions of Windows preloaded on it, get financing for it, and it would be all sold as a subscription. So it's like device as a service, right? I thought that was fairly clear. After that happened, a number of people rewrote my story on various sites and fact kind of became fiction very quickly. <laughs> I had people asking me crazy things and I'm like, where are you seeing this? Like, wh- like people are like, okay, so I'm not buying Windows 10 this way. I'm going, I'm sticking with seven. I'm going back to XP. I'm not doing this. I'm, I refuse to let Microsoft charge me for Windows uh, and make me buy a device from them. And I'm like, hold on. Like, where are you seeing this? And it turned out a couple of sites took liberties and I would say for clicks and made this into this Microsoft is going to screw you over with a new plan where you can't um, refuse updates and you're going to have to take Windows and your device and pay for it, pay Microsoft for it. It was a lie, um, but that didn't stop any of these sites from <laughs> from saying that. They, uh, You know, a couple of people who rewrote it kind of jumped to the next conclusion and they're like, okay, they're not doing it for consumers now, but you know that's what's next. Well, guys, I don't know if you remember 2014. Remember the rumors of Windows 365, which was Microsoft was going to make everybody pay for Windows as a subscription? That never actually happened, did it? We aren't. We still are not hearing this is going to be a it consumer thing. It happened because we fought to preserve the integrity. <laughs> that we, must be it. We stopped them cold, Mary Jo. That must be it. Yep. I don't know. Like, these stories have taken on a life of their own. I'm, and... Just I'm like, okay, if you're gonna rewrite somebody's story, at least try to say what they said. Like yeah. it, like quote it maybe or like say they said this. But what I was wondering is this if this is gonna happen. Instead of saying, you know what's next, Microsoft's already planning to do this to consumers, and that's not the case. Well, welcome to the modern world. I mean, that's I know. This is life, <laughs> right? Life is yeah. we know. I didn't want to use some of the the criticisms that Paul was quite blunt with this morning on Twitter, which was pretty hilarious. Well, that's about why we this. read Paul's Twitter. That's why. Yeah. yeah. I, there are just uh, scumbags out there oh who my. get hits for publishing baloney, and I just can't deal that's with it. That's actually true. They, that's exactly right. They know they're scumbags. They know they're not right. They know that this is baloney. I, I, I'm trying to be kind here. I don't know. I just. You are. I know. They whip people into I a just, frenzy. You know, like everybody who asked me, I'm like, Believe me, if Paul or I hear that Microsoft is going to do this, we will be the first ones to write about this. We're not going to hide it. We're not going to, you know, let you Listen, get socked or whatever. The reality of Microsoft is ridiculous enough. There's no reason to make stuff up. <laughs> the, the, That's true. The, what they're actually doing is ludicrous right. in many cases. So, like, we're yeah. not going to, we don't have to make stuff up. Yeah. That's it's unbelievable. Yeah. This guy just gets hits by publishing crap, and I, I, it just makes me nuts. And I just well, he wasn't the only one who did it either. I yeah, saw. Well, yeah, but it's, it's, no, it it's a snowball right. effect. You yeah. know, you, you can yeah. kind of see where it comes from. Yeah. Yep. Yep. No. The excrement. So so machine. far, business only. If this if this even ever comes to market, I think it will come to market. I think they're fairly far along with this. Maybe they'll even talk about it at Ignite. I don't know, but um, yeah, it's gonna. I think it's gonna happen. But business option. Only, not forced. So, yeah. So, you uh, what you're describing is Windows 365. Can we just get it th cut through the baloney yeah, yeah. and say this? Uh -huh. is Windows 365. Uh -huh. The exactly. truth comes out. Mary Jo Foley has confirmed. <laughs> Microsoft is going to screw consumers over with Windows 365. Okay. Thank you. See, how hard is it to say that? <laughs> is it safe to say, though, that that is not on Microsoft's roadmap? I mean, do we really know? I don't they've think always, it's on their always, roadmap. They always acted like they wanted to do something like that, right? Well, I don't think they're acting. I mean, I think they would. Uh, it's the not, subscription re revenue is ideal for any yeah, big it's company. It's not unreasonable. Right? They're going to continue to be working on it. Yeah. They want to have as many things for sale as a subscription as they can. Right. What they can't do is force people to um, it doesn't, take something that's free right now, and suddenly you're like, oh, and I'm going to pay for Microsoft to force updates on me? Twice a year. Right. Microsoft is following the mobile platform model with Windows. With Windows, yeah. so right. uh, iOS and Android are you know, no one pays for those directly, 
right? right. There was a, there was a really good story about Spotify and Fast Company this past week, and they had quotes from Tim Cook uh, from Apple, and he said something I found to be very disingenuous. And he was what he was trying to oh, do was I compare. I know I hated that. Oh, I know what you the mean. Apple Music comparison to Spotify, and what he said was, "We're not, we're not trying to make money from this." You know, as if they were doing it from, we just, we just love music. We just you know? love music, no. and we feel that humans <laughs> should make music. And that was, yeah. That's great. So here, what, the way you make money on something that's free is you sell these services on the side Top. that are this right. subscription revenue that is so desirable. So things like, you know, the storage on iCloud, in the case of Apple, uh, Apple Music subscriptions, uh, this coming Apple TV service, whatever it may be. Like, there, there are these things, yeah. you know, they have a captive audience of hundreds of th uh, millions, if not billions of people. Um, you, you try to find these things that you can uh, kind of carry along on a subscription. Um, the operating system is never going to be that thing, you know. The, the, when enterprises uh, license Windows, they're not really technically paying for the software. They're paying for the support, Right. They're paying for the, you know, there's a whole package that comes involved. It, it's the, it's the the way a car company or a, an auto dealer makes money. You know, the, the the overhead on the car is very low, is uh, well, very high, I guess. They, the 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 um the amount of money they make on the vehicle is very small, typically, mm -hmm. unless you're an idiot. Um, the way they make money is by the simonizing and the, you know, the additional services and can we excel you an extended warranty and th that's what this stuff is. It, this is yeah. this is it's the same model really. I mean, there is something called Windows 10 Enterprise. There's an E3 and an E5. I think the E3 or one of those two just went away. But th that is yeah. Windows 10 sold as a subscription to enterprise customers who want that support. It's not like, support. you know, Microsoft is taking support. the operating system, yeah. right? And, right, and charging you no, that, it's not, that uh, money. Uh, you, right. In other words, they're not saying, look, Windows costs $109. Right. So what we're going to do is we're going to charge you $11 a month for two years or whatever how that works out. I can't do math. That's not what that is, but whatever, <laughs> you know. And then at some point in time, there's going to be a new version of Windows, and we're going to start yeah. charging you for that. But that's not what this is. It's not. No. You're not really the the Windows is the Windows is the thing the other things run on. You know, right. Microsoft you know, tried like, consumer yeah. services and didn't do very well. Yeah, like you just said though, like if Microsoft could charge a monthly they subscription would, fee for Windows, second. they would. And they would love to. Second. Can I just <laughs> say I don't think there's even anything wrong with that. Right. Yeah. Um, I understand consumers don't get... want it. They're used to buy. This is the hard thing is to change. If they'd started that way, nobody would be complaining about it. But the hard thing is to take something that people bought outright or more likely got free with the computer. They thought free right. with the computer. So, okay, but how do you how do you fix that problem? It's easy, right? That you can look. We can point to like let's use two obvious examples of services that are such no brainers that are subscriptions compared to the you know, uh, on-prem or whatever you want to call it, ad hoc version, uh, Office 365, right? Because they throw in, in this case, like a terabyte of storage per person in a home that's like five people. It's, yeah. cra it's a yeah, crazy give them something. Deal. Give them some. You know, if you had to buy Office, one version of Office for every person in a four- or five-person household, you're talking about several hundred dollars. It's very expensive. But if you say to them it's $99 a year, they're like, yep, done. Right. The other one is is music, frankly, right? Because we we can be numb nuts and can hand curate our stupid little MP3 com collections and put them on hard drives and move them to devices and do all that stupid stuff. Or you could pay Google or Apple or not Microsoft anymore, Spotify, whatever it is, nine ninety nine a month or fourteen ninety nine for a family fan, and everyone gets all the music in the world. You know, not really, but like thirty, forty million songs. Yeah. No brainer. You know, yeah. for most people, I know there are people yeah. listening to this who've got to fall in the other minority portion of both of those arguments. I get it. The, the, you know, it's a diverse world. It's fine. But for most people, the, those two things just make sense. So when you look at Windows, I think the problem is they can't find a thing where you're like, this is a no brainer. You know, they did it for Office on consumer and commercial. They're able to do it for Windows and commercial because, again, there's a whole support network and partners and additional things you can layer on top of it and other things you're using on the side of it. It's incredible. It's a whole ecosystem of stuff. But Windows, you know, and PCs, it's like you, you, you give someone a PC, they're done. They don't, they're not really thinking. Mm -hmm. No one no one sees value in like, well, you can go from home to pro, mm -hmm. you know, just pay five bucks a month. No one's going to do that. It's, no, it's harder to make that jump. 
And if Google and if Apple did it, then maybe Microsoft could do it. But they offer the operating system for free. Yeah, so, that I makes mean, it a little harder, yeah. I think the moment that Apple harder. said Mac OS upgrades are free, iOS upgrades are free, this 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 whole mod this any plans they may have had crumbled. They could they could never. You can't go back from that chasm. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, and the reason this comes up in my mind is because uh, router manufacturers now really want to charge a monthly or mm. year. Oh, jeez. Really? And that's hard to do I, I, because you have, everybody has that mm -hmm. reaction. But I don't think it's such a big deal because you want them to have s some skin in the game so they keep updating it. Mm -hmm. Boy, and so what they've been doing, so, uh, so Plume is one of them. And Plume basically said initially it'll stop working once you... <laughs> Once you stop wow. paying the oh, ninety nine bucks a year, I and like people what did not like that. Was like this. What if plumbing was like this. You know, <laughs> I'm flushing the toilet and it doesn't seem to be yeah, going but anywhere. Plumbing, the guy doesn't come out once a month and make sure everything's working. You would pay for that if you would wanted it. You'd pay for that, and you want Actually, a router that is constantly updated with new features. And so, what Eero does, and Eero's a sponsor, but what Eero does is they 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 charge. They have the same thing. It's a $99 Eero Plus. You get a lot of benefits out of it, you know, like filtering okay. and stuff. Uh, mm -hmm. I think that's good. Frankly, if router manufacturers mm -hmm. could figure out a way to make that work, that, that they will. And it's not unreasonable because you want a router where the guy ha cares enough to keep it up to date. It's a big security issue. Mm. And I think that, that that's not too far off from the what Microsoft. Okay. I, uh, yeah, you know? that's interesting. I... I I, but to Mary Jo's point, your initial point, reaction I, is exactly what the world said. Yeah. <laughs> like, screw yeah. that, man! What are well, you talking but, about? But I think that's but that's probably many people's initial reaction to Office 365. Exactly. Mm. Yeah. I don't understand this. They think they got it for free with a computer, which they didn't, or they think it comes as part of Windows, which it doesn't, or mm. they did pay 129 dollars for the home and student for it, whatever they call it these days. And they're like, I don't, I can use this for seven or eight, ten years, whatever it is. Why would I pay 99 dollars right. a year for something else? Right. But you, you kind of have to show it to them, and they're like, oh, okay. A lot of them will say that's actually kind of incredible, especially if they have a family involved, whatever it might be. Yeah. But, um, yeah, I don't know. I, I really I, – what Mary Jo said earlier, or I think it was Mary Jo, it was, basically was just that if they could, they would. There's no doubt about yeah. that. I just yeah. don't think they've they, – smart, smarter people than us have th – I mean, than me, certainly, have thought about this. And they can't think of a thing where they can show you the plate and say, yeah, what, you, what you're showing me makes sense. I will pay that fee. I just don't think it exists in mm -hmm. the consumer market mm -hmm. for Windows. Yep. It's a conundrum. Because you, well, you are, I mean, look at Microsoft is constantly updating Windows. Mm -hmm. Yep. Uh, and that costs money. That costs them, you know, I, I don't, I have probably come around on this. I doubt I liked the idea initially. But as, as you think about it, you kind of, it's like me paying, I pr prefer to pay for a, Software, then yeah. get it for free because I or a service on the web, then to get it for free because I want them to. Like I, I used to use Delicious for my bookmarks, yeah. right? It was free, yeah, gone. So I so along comes uh, Pinboard, and my mm -hmm. Ches sheds. You know what? You want this to succeed, so I'm going to charge you, and I'm pay for it mm -hmm. happily. Um, I think that mm -hmm. that's not a. We've seen the cost of free it's not, software. It's a, yeah, it's not a bad model. I but I. Something like what you like you said, Windows. It costs uh, money for Microsoft to update Windows. Yes, it does. Um, App, Apple and Google also update their software. It costs them money too, and so they're making it in some way. I right? understand, right? Mm -hmm. um, I, I think the the enterprise licensing of Windows, not Apple that it's sells subsidized. hardware, Google Apple sells, sells you. Hardware. Google sells you, yeah. <laughs> yeah well, I mean, go, well, Google yeah. <laughs> Google licensed Android too, right? I mean, mm -hmm. the the version of Android that most people are getting has been paid for by a hardware manufacturer. I think you can make some. the case, though, that more money is made by the advertising and the use of Google search yeah. and all oh, that. Oh, for sure. But yeah. for sure. It, it It's absolutely okay to uh, subsidize it. This is... Uh, Apple Music runs at a loss. We're never going to find out what it is. But they're subsidizing it because it's part of the whole ecosystem that keeps people involved with the Apple products that do make money. It's For them, it's probably fine. They're never going to say it like that. They have to pretend they love music and that's why they do it. Um, well, I mean, it's just... It's baloney. But... Yeah. <laughs> um, Apple or Google, rather, uh, they're never going to talk about. Yeah, we're just we're monetizing you, obviously. Um, but one thing, you know, to be fair to Google, um, I, I I often for many years had a problem with the fact that they were an advertising company. They generated billions of dollars. And they were able to just enter markets at will, 
and just throw things at the wall and see what stuck. And it's always kind of bugged me. But the thing that kind of makes it a little less onerous is they actually make pretty good stuff. I, I think we talked about this a few weeks ago or whatever. But a lot of the stuff they make is really good, uh, whether it's a web service or a, a mobile app or whatever. And to the, we're at the point now where I think you know a lot of consumers would would pick it, uh, even if it wasn't the default choice. You know, whatever it might be, Chrome or Google Search or whatever. Um, it's interesting. It, it creates an interesting problem. And the other thing with Google, when you look at their revenues every quarter, like I do, the percentage of the revenues from Google come from advertising. It used to be like ninety-seven percent. Um, this past quarter, I think it was. I think the number was eighty-four oh, percent. Really? Um, they still make. They still make most of their money from advertising. But guess what? Those mm -hmm. enterprise things, that's starting to pay off. You know, mm -hmm. they're starting to make money on it. It's interesting. That's all. Yeah. People really hate this. They're saying, Leo, you're pro-greed. <laughs> Leo, come on. You're, you're like a, if you the love guy, Linux. You're, you, if the guy wasn't named I, Noodles, I'd, uh, I'd, I'd take that personally. <laughs> but, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, no, I, 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 maybe it's because I have a, I own a business now and I understand that you can't, you know, that you have to, the business to continue has to have revenue. Yeah. You're the and guy from Wall Street. What's his name, Gordon? Gecko? Greed is good, man. <laughs> greed is good. Uh, no, greed isn't good, but businesses need to survive. And, uh, you know, I know people really hate Adobe, what Adobe's done. And the key is that you've got, if you're going to do this, you got to offer value. And the problem right. is that people are conditioned that they buy software once and that's that. That's and yeah, if you never want your software updated, uh, fine. Adobe might be an even better version. Uh, an example of this thing, um, you, you know, people used to buy, they would buy Adobe Photoshop 3, and then the next seven versions would come out, and they wouldn't upgrade. There was all this mm -hmm. stuff going on. At some point, uh, you know, the upgrade because it was expensive. It was several hundred dollars to buy Photoshop. It's very expensive. Um, and now they have this subscription where it's basically, what, 10 yeah, bucks a month? I, I pay 10 it bucks a month happily. Suite. Happily. It is the, it's the Office 365 model. Right. You know, it, it's, uh, it's smart. And that company, by the way, is super successful. Right. Um, that's working out great for them. It's like, oh, no, I paid for Netflix. I don't need to pay them again. You know? <laughs> yes. I, I, I bought them. an HBO right. subscription. I own all of the movies on Netflix, <laughs> yeah. don't I? What do you want? You want more money? Well, I already bought a subscription. Yeah. I used to say that about taxes. What do you mean I have to pay taxes? I just paid them last year. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, it's just, it's just you know, uh, I, I, it, the problem is the world's changing. And Microsoft, sure, they made plenty of money when everybody bought a new PC every few years. But yeah. uh, that, that ain't happening anymore. Yeah. Right. What an ironic problem no one ever foresaw for the PC industry. Their products are so stable and reliable, no one ever needs to upgrade <laughs> need anymore. Upgrade. Apple's <laughs> seeing the like, same thing with the iPad. Is this like a bizarro world? Yeah, what happened here? Apple's seeing the same thing yeah. with the iPad. And I, I think that's part of the reason Microsoft sells hardware now. Maybe not, but... It, but you know. So it could be crappy again? <laughs> yeah. Let's let's screw this thing up. There, people are clearly not buying new stuff. We're going to bring the level of quality we have yeah. in Windows to hardware. Mm -hmm. yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> no, no. I'm, we're joking. Much. Joking. <laughs> All right. Let's talk about... Uh, now, okay. I'm so confused by the rockets and uh, the stones and the... Redstone what 5 that? is... <laughs> when? What? How? It's Windows Longhorn. No. No. That, that's wrong. It's the next version of Windows coming in October this A year. 1810. 1809, actually, because it'll RTM, okay, 1809. which we're not supposed to say. It's 1809 because it's coming out in October. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Makes sense. Oh, <laughs> yeah. No, but you add one. You always add one. Yeah. Yeah. I always add one. No, because no, it's computer science. It's always zero and then one. Because 1803 that's came one. out in May. No, wait a minute. That didn't work. <laughs> kind of dead, but. Okay, never mind. So, uh, build 17730 came out last week, and 33 came out this week. Just In fact, just before the show. So, let's talk about those. Yeah. Uh, what is a retail OOBE? Because it's got it in the 17730. So, this is the one from last week. So, I was excited to install this build because they said that people in the Insider program, when they rebooted after this install, were going to see the out-of-box experience that people would see when they upgraded to it in the real world, right? Oh, so in other words, oh. when it was into October, you get these screens that come up. They, like, look at your privacy stuff again, blah, blah, whatever. Out-of-box experience. O-O-B-E. Yes. Got it. So this was, this was uh, that's an old-fashioned term. They probably don't even call it that anymore. Because there's no um, box, Paul. No box, yeah. Well, once it goes to Golden Master, Leo, see it, then it heads into a box. <laughs> <laughs> so they could print the floppies. Yeah, I understand. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, um... 
I brought two computers with me here to Sweden. Um, one of them is the computer we already discussed, the X1 Yoga, and the other one was the Surface Book 2. And that computer is running RS5. The, it's on the Windows Insider Preview. I've been having really bad problems with it over the past couple of weeks. The performance is really bad. It's just it's acting weird. And I kind of figured at one point I was going to just kind of blow it away. And so I use this uh, build as an excuse to do that because the first time I installed, I upgraded to it, you know, as you do in the Windows Insider program. I didn't see any of that stuff they were talking about. So I reset it. And when you reset it, you do see that stuff, right? So there are actually some additional screens now in setup. And it, it, some of them are actually really interesting and are going to require me to spend some time on them. For example, one of the screens had to do with um, uh, one drive. And the idea was, hey, do you want to put all of your files in one drive instead of using the normal folders you might use for documents and pictures and so forth? I chose no because I didn't want to screw with that right now, but I this is something I need to kind of test side by side, but that's brand new. That's that's very interesting. You know, the privacy stuff hasn't been updated yet again because they got to keep that moving to keep the EU away. Um, what was the other thing that changed? Uh, I can't remember, but I, I didn't see it when I upgraded. I, I had to to blow it away. And then a new build came out this week with another thing. Yeah. Today's build is, um, I guess the only new feature is File Explorer finally has a dark theme that actually looks fully dark. <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> Just, uh, right? I mean, we'll because it, it was darker. weird before, it didn't really look like a totally yeah. dark theme based on things I've seen people say, but now it is the way it is meant to be and how it will ship, I guess. Now, yeah. That seems to be the only brand new thing in the build. Everything else that was listed today were um, known issues, fixes. So they're getting closer towards the end of Redstone 5 planning and I development. Think we're hitting, we, we, it's possible we have literally hit the feature complete stage. You know, they'll never right. come yeah. out and say this, but, no. you know, this uh, file explorer dark mode thing is something they talked about a long time ago. They've, it's mm -hmm. been in builds, but only partially implemented. It's right. tough because it's a legacy desktop application. So yeah. God knows it was probably written in P code or something, but it's just, mm -hmm. you know, it's not like the modern apps where they can kind of flip a switch and make that stuff work yeah. a little more easily. So right. yeah, it looks, I, I, I just realized I left the computer upstairs so I can't see it, but it, it's installed. I just don't have it in front of mm -hmm. me. Yet. Yeah. Um, and then uh, we didn't but, say about last week's build, but I guess mm -hmm. um, they had pre-announced that your phone would be working with, um, Redstone 5, that your phone app that allows you to more easily exchange things like photos and bookmarks and all these kinds of things between Windows 10 and Android and iOS. But as of last Friday's build, 17730, it actually is starting to work now. Well... Uh, yeah. Right. I, I, so In a limited lots way. Of, <laughs> yeah, lots of, lots of asterisks there. Um, does not work with iOS. All right. um, it doesn't work with yet. Yet, yeah, you know, it, it's probably always so, going to be so fairly. Limited. Not my phone, you, your phone. Right, right, right. Well, but, but we, that's another thing. Sorry. <laughs> uh, based on just common sense and logic, I think this thing should be called my phone, not your phone. It's my phone. You Why know, when I interact call it with my the, phone. Why don't, I don't they? Know. That's I don't know. a better name. <laughs> it used to be my computer. It's my computer. You know, it's my right. PC today. It's the name of the thing. It's not your mm -hmm. PC. I don't know. But yep. Microsoft inconsistency or, you know, like two right. opposing magnets, they never quite... Oh, my phone is your phone. <laughs> no, it's your phone. Um, so the first version of this only works with photos. Eventually, it's going to support notifications and messages. Um, it does look just like the thing they showed off at Build. Um, so the mm -hmm. UI hasn't changed. That's nice. Uh, I, I found it to be really annoying. Um, my phone and the computer kept displaying dialogues or pop-downs that, that would say it was reconnecting to the device. So it's it's doing some kind of a Wi-Fi connect kind of thing. Um, you have to be on I the same the Wi-Fi benefit. network, right, to, to make oh, it yeah. work. Yeah, this is ugly. Well, it, no, but it's it's a good <laughs> idea. I, I, I guess um, I have to think like a normal person because I, I use it more for work type thing. So if I got a laptop in for review, I would take my phone and I would take photos of it. And the way, I, the way I used to get those photos to the computers, I would connect the cable and just kind of sync them over. The way I do it now is my photos are auto-synced to Google Photos, so I just load that in the web browser, and then I download them to PC. 
that's kind of an extra step when you think about it. You know, I'm uploading and downloading, really. I mean, I'm not managing, but it happens in the background. Um, you know, this is kind of nice because you just bring up the app and you see the photos in your phone. Allegedly, I actually, in the, the version I have, you can only see 25 photos, but the 25 most recent photos, but whatever. You know, yeah. I, I, I think the theory here is you, you take a lot of photos with your phone, but you occasionally, as a normal person, will want to edit them. And that the, the PC is the ideal place to do that. And you can do that. Um, it should save it back to the phone, right? This, yeah. there, there's some kind of value to that, perhaps. Or maybe you want to share them to social media and do it in a more elegant fashion than might be possible on a phone. Um, it's a good idea. Mm. So we'll see. I, right now, I, I actually disabled it. I found it to the connection and reconnection thing to be a little too busy and annoying. Yeah. And I was yeah. actually really worried what it was doing to the battery life on the phone. Oh, right. Mm. Um, but I'll give it a chance. I mean, it's, it's an app. So the way they implemented it was really strange. I think it was the previous build. The app was there, but it didn't do anything. Right. And then they released a new version of the app to the store, but it didn't automatically upgrade to this version. You had to go to the store and download it, and then it would, you know, it's just, it's weird. But weird. I, mm. I, yeah, I think the point of it is it will ship in the product, meaning the next version of Windows 10. But then because it is an app, it can then be upgraded mm -hmm. or updated every day if they want it to be, right? Because it's not a core part of the OS. So um, it's probably the right way to do it. So this is how we're okay. going to start getting back to getting our phone messages to show up on the PC, right? Because it doesn't work anymore. It, yeah. It, and yeah, mm -hmm. the, the thing they had before, well, the thing I have, I guess what they have today technically, this, which is just phone settings or whatever. You kind of link right. your your phone to the mm. Microsoft account. Right. But mine doesn't show up the mess with messages anymore. It used to. Yeah. Well, because it, it's something, I think you actually configure it in Cortana. And because yeah. um, that's really obvious. Um, <laughs> so I think I think I having an app, did, like in other words, yeah, yeah I, I find it to be very it's, unreliable. It so cracks yeah. me up. All the hoops you have to jump through. I know. To get yeah. it to do what Apple just does because it's all owned by the same company. When you control yeah. the platform, it's a wonderful thing, yeah. right? You can yeah. build the stuff at the back. Um, there are, you know, there are third-party utilities on Android. And actually, the Messages app on Android that Google makes now has a web app, uh, which you can use to get your uh, to send right. and receive messages on Windows. That actually works great. Um, yeah. They I just I get everybody just to buy Apple products, and then we won't have to worry about this. <laughs> well, nice. okay. if you're all so using I messages. I, I uh, oh boy. So I Draw agree that, that again. <laughs> <laughs> there is there is a simple kind of matrix like quality that I I I, I and that's absolutely great for a lot of people. Um, the nature of Android though is such that. You can run a background process on Android that will intercept text messages and allow this kind of thing to happen. There's no reason why this can't be fairly elegant. Um, mm. I think it will be okay. I agree it will probably never be as seamless as what Apple does because, again, you know, when you, when you own the whole widget, it's, kind of, it's easier to do this kind of stuff. You know, the, the, if you really want annoying... <laughs> Yes, <laughs> the, and, and I know I know Microsoft listens to you guys, so I'm just gonna you know put this out there. When you first mm -hmm. install the new Windows, uh, you know, computer setup, Windows computer, it says, "Hey, we'd like to integrate with your phone. Give us your phone number," as if yeah. something wonderful is going to happen. <laughs> I know something wonderful is going to happen, Leo. You're going to download the Microsoft launcher. You're going to get no. You don't even not even that. You get a spam text that says, "Would you well, no, like the Microsoft well, launcher?" Right. So, right. Okay. <laughs> That's all sure. I get is a text. Unless you have, well, it's worse on iOS because if you have iOS, what you get is a spam Nothing. text that says, "Would you like to download the Microsoft would, Edge app?" Would you like to? Buy, <laughs> would you like to buy an Android phone? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's it, it, so. I guess that maybe with your phone, it will be my more, phone. More no, <laughs> one's phone. That's what they should call it. One's phone. So, one's phone. <laughs> One's phone, one's documents, one's pictures. Uh, it, it, it kind of remains to be seen how elegant this will be on iOS. Um, I do think there are going to be some issues there. Um, that's not Microsoft's fault. That's Apple's fault. Apple, right. Apple yeah, doesn't yeah, let yeah, them in the door. Sure. They said, no, yep. no, no. Mm -mm. Sure. Yep. Uh, it's, but, uh, no, I mean, the Apple 
you know, they do this for a reason, is and it, they do it for anti-competitive reasons. But they also, but there is a, an argument to be made for the, the the seamlessness of what they do. Yeah, for sure. I, well, you know, and and that's the thing. I mean, they say they say no, no, it just works better. They don't yeah, say yeah. it's anti-competitive. They just say it's you know. Jo- eh. No, there's, listen. There's all kinds of ways you could market it. I'm just saying. Yeah, right. <laughs> you know, the anti-competitive <laughs> it, angle is the one has I would choose. Multiple <laughs> so, benefits. It's uh, yeah. It's legal adjacent. I'm just saying. <laughs> <laughs> Multiple yeah. benefits, you know? Yeah, yeah. Um, Skype's back, baby. Thank you, Brad Sams, for, um, you're welcome, thank you, <laughs> for letting us know that Skype, that Microsoft has capitulated and all's right with the world. <laughs> right? I had a, I almost had a grand mal seizure when they, this thing happened because right before we, I went on this trip, I... I got upgrade notices on all my computers about Skype 8 point whatever. And I thought, well, I, I, I mean, you know, of course. Well, it's not the desktop app. It's this modern piece of junk that has like a single window. You know, it's like a mobile app. Yeah. And the first time I tried to do a podcast on it, it wouldn't even work. I had to revert to the old one. And then I had till September 1st. Right. We've been telling people, thinking, you know, get Skype classic. because What am I going to do? Yeah. What's anyone going to do? Right. <laughs> But then, customer complaints to the rescue. Yay. So many people were mad about this. They went on the forums and they were like, guys, you can't do this. Like, this version 8 doesn't have everything Skype Classic has. I'm switching. I'm leaving Skype. Right. Suddenly, uh, this week, there was a post saying, guess what? We're going to extend the end of support of Skype 7 Classic to some so far unpublicized time in the future. Until we bring all the features you've asked us for to Skype 8. So no September 1st deadline. We don't know when the new deadline is for them getting rid of Skype Classic. But it's not going to be imminent. I mean, the day they announced that, which wasn't that long ago. This must have been... It was a few we- uh, a week or two ago, right? It's July, yeah, I think, well, I was still yeah. home, so it was like three weeks mm-hmm. ago, let's say. Uh, it was after they started auto-installing this new update, this... Crazy wily people. Anyway, um, <laughs> they they got. I, I thought at that time, like this is really aggressive. Like they they didn't normally something like this. You you kind of you you look out over the year and you're like, look, it's January, so in in September we're going to start aggressively trying to upgrade people, mm-hmm. and then on January first we're gonna mm-hmm. we're gonna force the upgrade. Yeah. They were like, oh, 30 days. This is gone. Or six yeah. weeks or whatever it was. And I was like, guys, <laughs> like hold on a second. This would be fine if the thing you're giving us worked, but right. the, the replacement is not better than the thing that you already have and does not work. In my case, this is a well, long-standing tradition in software. Right? <laughs> look at uh, the, look at what Apple did with iMovie, what Adobe did with Lightroom, yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. whatever they call Microsoft it. Microsoft usually gives you more heads up, though they yeah. do. They typically give you right. a longer. Oh, and runway. it's a completely reasonable okay. complaint. I mean, don't take away features. Right. That's crazy. No, and the only way we found out about this, by the way, was um, a reader, Rick R. Podrick on Twitter, who sent me, Brad, and Paul a tweet and said, look at the support forum. They just acknowledged that wow. they are postponing the date. They never announced that they were postponing the date. They just put it in the forum, kind of hid it. And I think because of this guy, we found it. <laughs> there's an important lesson here, and it's something that we all need to take to heart, and it is this. Complaining always works. And this is why I am the way I am. (laughs) Yeah. I wish it always worked. Uh, It does sometimes work. (laughs) I know. Yeah. From a user experience standpoint, the issue I have with the new Skype clients, um, whether it's this new supposed desktop client or the Skype for Windows 10 client, which Mm -hmm. is really a mobile app, is that they're single window interfaces. The way I use Skype is in uh, what they call it. I want to. Say, I almost said complex mode, compact mode. So <laughs> you have a, Very you know, you have a window that has all of your contacts in it and all your recent mm-hmm. conversations. But when I double click on Mary Jo's face or in Raphael's face or Brad's face or whatever, a, a new window opens up for each one of these people. And when I want to switch between what I'm doing, whether it's a conversation with Mary Jo or I'm in a, a Chrome web browser and Microsoft Word or whatever it is, I Alt Tab and all of those things are in there. Mm-hmm. And when you have a single window that has all of your communications in there and different little conversations in a list, you're like, okay, yeah, I'm an adult, right? 
I know that when I'm in my, uh, Google Chrome or Microsoft Edge and I have multiple tabs open, I mean, I can do like a control tab kind of thing and tab between them. I, I could adjust to this. That doesn't work in Skype. <laughs> I don't, I, maybe someone's listening and maybe they have the, the secret command code I can use to switch between these conversations. But, you know, I kind of want to get on with life. I'm not, I don't want to pick up the mouse every time and be like, eh, Mary Jo's little face, I'm going to click on her. <laughs> and then, you know, like I just, I just want to switch. You know, I type, I switch and I type and I don't, I can't do that. Or at least I don't know how to do it. It's not obvious. It doesn't work like other apps work. So anyway, hopefully they'll fix this. And um, So you think what they're going to do is bring back Classic until they get all the features into the modern... Well, it's well, still oh, there. Classic is still, still there. there. I mean, not... Yeah. yeah, I'm sorry. Keep it alive. No, but yeah. Here's... This is important. Uh, you know... Like I said, before I, I went away, I, I, I got it. You know, there's a new version of Skype. And I'm always like, of course I want to install that. You know, my God, this Skype application is terrible. Maybe you fixed it. <laughs> and then I install it. And what installs when you go from 7.x to 8 is a completely different application. It has nothing to do with the application yeah. I was just using. It looks like the modern app. It's the single interface, you know, single window, whatever. And... Um, once I figured that out, I, one of the, it, Skype is one of the apps I actually saved to OneDrive, so I always have an install of it because I'm always afraid they're going to kill it. And I, I uninstalled it, and I reinstalled from OneDrive the original 7.x version, whatever it was, and I did that on both of the computers that I brought here so I could do these podcasts and it would actually work. Mm. Um, I, I, I just... The thing that kills me... I, this is so hard to explain like what, how horrible this is, but... Every day when I turned on one of these computers or logged into my account or whatever it was, every single time that window would come up and it would say, mm. there's a new version of Skype available. Would you like to upgrade to it? And now I know that that thing that they want me to upgrade to is broken. And no, I do not want to upgrade to that. <laughs> and I saw this dialogue several times a day because when I'm here on this yeah. kind of a trip, I get up in the morning and I work. I see it then. I go out into the world. We visit Sweden or whatever we're doing. We come back turn on the computer I work but it comes again like it's just this constant in my face and I am happy to report that since this story has come out that they're going to back off that thing does not appear anymore mm. now I, it may appear occasionally maybe I, I haven't seen it yet but it used to come up multiple times every day they were really aggressive about it um, so this is a big change like I'm really glad this happened yeah I was I was frankly surprised that it happened, but in a good way, like pleasantly surprised that people's yeah. complaints made a difference. They should be as overt in explaining to the world that they screwed up and they're going to fix it as they were just announcing the original screw up. Mm. Yeah. I wish they had just kind of come out and said, look, we're sorry. It, it, you know, it was too fast. We're, we're going to set this right. We're good mm -hmm. people. <laughs> we're not trying to hurt you. <laughs> um, they don't seem to be all that. It's weird. They can never really do that. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. 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 Uh, Spotify's coming to Skype, though. That's nice. Yeah. That's a bunch of nonsense words right there. But uh, <laughs> I, that's I, I, the, it's fine. I, you know, it's it's just such a weird, you know, of course. So, it what does is, it like, even mean? I saw those headlines mean? that I didn't click, but I'm like, so what, Skype, what like any mean? chat. Yeah, you, you have a you have a chat window open. I'm talking to you, and there's a little like, there's an area where I can type in text, and that's what I do with you. I just type in text, but there's also a little plus button over on the side, and the plus button lets you add other stuff to the message, and those are the things I ignore. So one of the things you're going to be able to add is a link to a song, an artist, yeah. or an album that you like, and you're going to be able to uh, share music through Skype. You're going to be able to play music through Skype. Um, you and I could have a shared thing going on where we're chatting and listening to the same songs for some reason because we're teenagers now or whatever it is i don't know but it's it's <laughs> somebody I, must it, do this because uh, uh, this is a, yeah and you see a lot of these features like na the now playing you could like when yes. you post a picture have now play there must oh, be I, people who do be a, this that used to be you, you just remember that's amazing so back at back in the day yeah <laughs> windows xp time frame probably i don't know windows messenger or windows live messenger yeah you would see a person's the name status message status, would be, and not then listening it would, the to, status message yeah. could be right listening Paul to all the notes mm, yeah. I, right. I, yeah i absolutely through mtv urge <laughs> yeah. in windows media player <laughs> yeah, because exactly. i was that kind of an idiot yeah. in 2000 yeah. or whatever <laughs> listening to um, sarah smile by hall and oats next yeah. up 
America, yeah. a horse with no name. <laughs> I'm Anything Casey by Kasem. Kansas. Yeah. Yep. Kansas. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> we went to see Hall and Oates last night. Oh, you did? Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and they opened the concert with Casey Kasem. For 40 years, <laughs> this duo has been, it's with the funniest, it's like, oh boy, okay. trip back in time. Yep. Daryl Hall is 71 years old now. Wow, yeah, he's really? Got, he's got a great voice, though. He still sounds great. I was <laughs> not, I was expecting, you know, Vegas lounge act. But mm -hmm. it, oh, it, no. what, they were like a jazz he's, band. He's the real. They, they were the jamming. Real uh, John Oates is about four foot tall, but he still plays a rocking guitar. And they have <laughs> a guy who must have been with him since the beginning, uh, the sax guy. He mm -hmm. looks like he's 90, but he's got <laughs> flowing long gray hair down it's to his... Like, it's Bur what was his name? T-Bone Burnett. Didn't he play with those guys? Yeah, like that. Forever. Yeah. It's the funniest thing I ever saw. <laughs> and now... <laughs> <laughs> because you asked for it, here's yep. Hall and Oates. Uh, let's take, do you want to do, is there any more Skype news? No, okay. that's no. sadly all of it. <laughs> that's it. We're, Skype we're done, has ruined my life. We're, we're, done, we're done with so. the Skype news? Okay, good. Yeah. Uh, so let's take a break. And the back of the book is next as we continue on with Windows Weekly. Paul Thorat from Thorat.com. He's in Stockholm. Mary Joe Foley. And, and he's, by the way. This book is still available. If, if <laughs> yes. Operators are standing by. <laughs> uh, uh, what a world that would be. Wouldn't it, wouldn't it be great if there were a long tail for books like the Delphi 3 Super Bible? But there isn't. That book is, uh, that book is like fish. The day after it appears, it's out of date. <laughs> what the hell? Is, is that? A, is the train? That is was the outside my window. Is the train yeah, coming through? Oh. It sounded like. <laughs> Jeez, that was you? Wow. Was I thought maybe Paul, you know, because I figure Stockholm has a lot of trains. Yeah. It was just Paul's near the tracks, but no. No. Yeah. Our show today brought to you by Rocket Mortgage. Do you have a rocket going by you could play? <laughs> I might have something like that on my sound effects. No, or not. <laughs> I'm punchy today. Rocket Mortgage from Quicken Loans. Quicken Loans, the number one lender in the country. Honest to gosh, they're uh, kind of amazing. Number one in customer satisfaction for eight years in a row. But number one now, and I think they're closely related, um, in uh, volume as of December. They bypassed the big bank. And I'm glad because I bought, last time we bought a house, four years ago, we bought it, uh, we got a mortgage through the big bank. And that was no fun. You go into an office, you know, and you have to kind of be nice and dress up and look prosperous. And then they give you a big, long stack of application forms you got to fill out. And then you have to go find stuff and call the bank and say, you know, the other bank that I, when I use and say, uh, can I get statements from 2010 through 2018? And I mean... It, it's just nuts. It took us several months. So I've told you before about how fast Quicken Loans is, especially their Rocket Mortgage product. This is an entirely online uh, mortgage approval process. They call it Rocket Mortgage because it's fast. You go to rocketmortgage.com. You don't have to go to the bank. You don't have to get dressed up. You don't have to be obsequious or show prosperity. You merely need to go to rocketmortgage.com slash windows. Uh, create an account there. They'll ask you a couple of questions you already know the answer to. And then because they have relationships with all the financial institutions, once you give them permission, they can get everything they need. And based on income and assets and credit, they'll give you qualified approval in minutes, literally minutes. The next step, they call this the power buying process, by the way. The next step is in within 24 hours, they give you what they call verified approval. That's like, uh, that's like uh, leveling up. That's like another prestige level. Because with a verified approval, it's basically saying you got the loan. You are now, a, in effect, a cash buyer. This is a big deal. When you're going out now, we're in a seller's market. When you're going out to buy a house, the seller sees the verified approval, and you can get a letter or whatever it is they need, uh, and they know you're good for it. So there's no contingency on getting the loan that puts you right at the head of the line when you're making an offer. There's still, though, some anxiety. I know buying a house is the most expensive thing you'll ever buy, right? Biggest check you'll ever write, right? So um, it's, it's anxious making. And the fact that interest rates have been going up lately is even more anxious making. Because, you know, just a quarter point interest uh, increase means tens of thousands of dollars usually over the life of the loan. 
you know, 30 year loan, that's there's a lot of interest. So every quarter point matters. And that has the unfortunate side effect of as you're shopping for a house, putting pressure on you to buy uh, right away. Like, don't wait another month because the interest rates are going up, right? And you don't want that. You don't want any pressure. You want to find the right house. You don't want to jump at the first thing you see. Honest. My realtor always told me, uh, Leo, you love the house, but the house doesn't love you. <laughs> don't buy out of love. You got to really make it, you know, you got to, this is an important decision. So that's the other way that this power buying process helps you. Once you get the uh, verified approval, you're qualified for Quicken Loans' all new exclusive rate shield approval. This is the rate shield is great. It means that your interest, even if interest rates are going up, and they are, yours won't. You lock in that interest rate for up to 90 days. That means you have up to three months to shop, to look for a house without any pressure. There's no time constraint. You could just say, oh, you know, we know what the rate's going to be. Actually, you don't because it could go down. If rates go down, right now that's kind of unlikely, but if they go down, your rate will go down. It just won't go up. So you win either way. This is exactly what you'd expect from America's largest and best lender because they're customer focused. They think about your experience and they're trying to make the mortgage uh, approval process better for you. That's why they created Rocket Mortgage. Very simple. You only have to remember one thing, rocketmortgage.com slash windows. Go there right now. Get it set up. Get ready. When it's time, you'll, you'll, you'll be ready. They do uh, refis too, by the way. Rate shield approval is only valid on certain 30-year purchase transactions. Additional conditions or exclusions may apply based on Quicken Loans data in comparison to public data records. They're an equal housing lender. They're licensed in all 50 states. NMLSconsumeraccess.org, number 3030. Rocketmortgage.com slash windows. That's all you need to know. Rocketmortgage.com slash windows. We thank them so much for making our Windows Weekly Podcast possible. We continue on with the back of the book, and Paul has a tip of the week. Paul? Yes. Yes. Indeed, yes, I, do. I do. You know, if you only had a <laughs> Surface Go, it would just pop right up. <laughs> That's true. I have it in some goofy little window because I don't want the white to blow up my face. You're kind of I'm pink and purple right now a little bit. Yeah. So last week it was... Um, Dusk. I was ghost. I was ghost face. No, it's still. It's. 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 What is it? Ten. Yeah. It's. it's it looks dark light. outside from here. Yeah. But if you go, if you were to go outside, you you could see the sky. Like it's not. It's kind um, of amazing. Yeah. Yeah. It's weird. Um, weirder is the three thirty in the morning sunrise thing. But anyway. Um, hey, hey. So, <laughs> Microsoft <laughs> is widely expected to upgrade most of its Surface PCs this fall, probably in October. So it is perhaps not coincidental that right now their portable computers are all on sale. Uh, at least the ones from the previous gen. So you, you may recall that uh, Surface Laptop and Surface Pro in particular are on previous gen Intel chips, so they're dual core, not quad core like we get in the 8th gen. Um, Surface Book 2, however, is on the 8th gen, at least on the upper level models. Um, but it, it too is on sale. And so all of those computers are on sale right now uh, through the Microsoft Store from between two to $300 off depending on the model. Looking across these, I would say the sweet spot. Sweet, hello, <laughs> the sweet spot mm -hmm. is probably the Surface Laptop. So, the base configuration of that device is a, an M3 processor, which is not great, seven ninety nine. But for seven ninety nine on sale now, you can get the Core i five with eight gigs of RAM and one hundred twenty eight gig SSD, and that's this is a, an awesome laptop. Um, it's an incredible price. I believe the base. Surface Pro is the same price, Core i5, 128, uh, 8 gigs of RAM, but you need to buy this, you know, the type cover and possibly a pen, so it's a little bit more. But um, if you've been kind of holding off because of the prices and everything, this is probably about as good as it's going to get for the previous gen, um, unless the newest stuff comes out. Maybe they, they fire sell the old stuff, but... Um, it's this is a good sale. So you had to go to the MicrosoftStore.com and um, and just check that out. Um, Mary Jo, did you want to do your code name now because it's kind of related? I could. Yeah. Can we do the code name now? Just yeah, mix, it mix it up a little. I don't know. Sure. Oh my God! Now I've got to rearrange everything. All right. I, <laughs> I've got my pencil out. I'll just. Yep. Okay. Go ahead. Okay. Yep. So, um, <laughs> yes. 
as Paul just said, we we believe some surfaces are coming this fall. And the rumor mill has said what we're likely to see this fall are the um, slight refreshes of the Surface Laptop and the Surface Pro 5, which is known as just plain old Surface Pro. We think they'll both get a refreshed 8th generation Intel chip and maybe USB-C. Um, and that's about it. So that's why yeah. we think these things are on sale. I haven't heard anything about the next Surface Book, Surface Book 2. Um, but we do know sure. some of the code names of these things floating around. We don't know these refresh Surface Pro or the Surface Laptop. We don't have code names for those so far. But we know that there is a Surface Pro 6, but probably t not until next year. And we've, we've, we've heard from Brad that code mm -hmm. name is Carmel. Like Carmel, California. I like the name. Carmel, sorry. Or Carmel. Carmel. That's different than Carmel. Carmel. Okay. Yes, sorry. <laughs> Carmel. Uh, okay. <laughs> yeah. I, well, I think that's what it is because Surface Studio 2, which we also think is, well, we're not actually sure if it's this year or next year, Capitola. So it seems like they're using um, city code names for the next generation. Uh, we think... Uh, well, you know what, Surface Studio 2, I'm curious. I think I think that will be a 2019 thing also. Mm -hmm. I think both Surface Pro 6 and Surface Studio 2 will be next year. The refreshes on Surface Laptop and Surface Pro will be this fall, I think. So we have yeah. we have the code uh, names yeah. for the things right. that are next year, but we don't have the code names for the things that are this fall. Yep. Okay. Yep. Yeah, so we'll see. So, I mean, I think this explains the sale. You know, it's so coming. Yeah. Maybe they're, they're getting rid of inventory or whatever. But these yeah. are great machines. They're all great machines. Surface Pro, the current version of Surface Pro, current version of Surface Lab, they're, they're excellent. Yeah, Alex, remember he was debating the $800 yeah. deal and uh, mm -hmm. the Surface Go. Yeah. ended up getting mm -hmm. the Surface Pro. He's very happy. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. he's, he, he, he would yeah. definitely prefer that. Computer. Yeah. 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 Good. Uh, um, bonus bonus tip. unrelated uh, tip. Yep. So... Microsoft finally joined Movies Anywhere, the Disney service, where you combined purchases from across different services from across multiple movie studios will be available everywhere, right? So um, this is kind of nice on a number of levels, but I have purchased a bunch of content from Apple, for example, and about two-thirds of that now is available through Google Movies and TV, Google YouTube, Amazon Prime Video, and now through Microsoft Movies and TV, and that's great. And so if you, you, know, you wouldn't do this on a Surface Go, but on another Surface device, you're going to take it on a, a flight. What that means is if you purchased a bunch of content elsewhere, it, it will show up in the Microsoft app on that on the Surface device or whatever PC you might, might have. Um, the hit rate for me is about two-thirds, but I guess it could be about as low as 50%. The issues are that some top studios are not there. I know Paramount is one of them. I don't have the list off the top of my head, but... Some studios out there. I think five of the biggest movie studios are involved with this. Obviously, the Disney stuff is all there. That includes the Star Wars movies and all the Disney movies. Um, each of the studios actually does take some movies out of the system, which is kind of interesting. I just found out about that this oh, week. Oh, I didn't know that. Uh, yeah, yeah, there's a fact about this. Um, so some of it's out. But when I look at the... I probably have 300-something purchases from yeah, iTunes. I, 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 I love Disney. Uh, or movies. Yeah, so when I open up uh, Microsoft Movies and TV, I have 206 movies in there now, oh, and I probably had 12 before or something. So yeah. um, that's really nice. Anyway, if you sign up for this now, Microsoft will give you a free movie. Um, the bad news is it's a, it's a, one of the lesser X-Men movies, but it's still a free movie, so... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like I always start the name of that is dope as you can get. Yeah, it's, okay, it, no, it's yeah. like X Men Future Today. So I don't forget oh, the name of it. It's a stupid okay. thing, but whatever. It's a free movie. Hey, it's free. Free, yeah. free is still free. Still takes two um, hours of your time. You'll never get back, but it is free. Well, I look. One of the things that is a reality on Windows 10 is that the UWP apps that are built into the system often get much better battery life than the classic desktop app. So, for example, if I wanted to play movies that I bought from iTunes before, I could use iTunes, which is a battery hog. It's terrible. Or if I had signed up for movies anywhere, maybe I could get the Amazon Prime Video app, which is a desktop app, which is also a terrible app. Now I can get a bunch of them in movies and TV, which is a Microsoft UWP app. It's going to give great battery life. It's the optimal situation. When Microsoft does battery life tests on Surface, that's the app they use because it gets incredible battery life. 
you know, it's it's it, there's an advantage to this. So there's no reason not to do it. One of the cool things about this is if you sign up, uh, if you sign you you link your Microsoft account with Movies Anywhere right now, and those movies kind of come over to your Movies and TV app. And then you're like, well, I don't want to do this anymore for some reason. And you unlink them. Those movies stay there. They're in your collection. You, right. They actually don't right. go you away. You don't lose them. Yeah. Yeah. It's actually pretty cool. Like, it's there's no reason not to do this. And you so, get the great X-Men Days of Future. And you get the X or whatever your, the ter your future right. test garbage, whatever. It's stupid. <laughs> so <laughs> I just did it. Uh, you can do it on the Movies Anywhere site. And I presume this is going to work with my Xbox, too, right? Movies. Yep, that's right. Yeah. That's right. Yep. So that's great. And you can link this from anywhere. I actually did it on an iPad and I still got the movie. So it doesn't yeah. matter how you do it. No, exactly. Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Paramount, Lionsgate, there are a few studios that don't participate. Yeah. But the five of the biggest ones are there. And yeah. it's it's a pretty it's pretty sizable. I got uh, my Star Wars collection all moved mm -hmm. over. So that's that's good. That's right. Yep. Yep. I'm that's happy. key for me. Got my uh, Alien, the director's cut. <laughs> I yep, don't think have the all Star the Trek stuff moved over, so maybe that's... No, because it's Paramount. Paramount, right? Paramount is uh, Star Trek. Uh, Friday the 13th is Paramount. Um, oh, well. That's probably about it. I could still <laughs> I watch know. them on my iTunes. It's just it's nice if I had it everywhere. Yeah. Yeah, you like to see universal compatibility. Yeah. But this kind of thing is really cool because remember when music went non-proprietary and they opened it up and it was just available everywhere all of a sudden? It was amazing, and I remember thinking when that happened, this yeah. will never happen with yeah. movies. Yeah. And this kind of gets there. It's it's pretty close. Like it's they're smart it's, because it, this it makes yeah. it this this helps against piracy because people it's it's convenience is what people want. They're not trying to save a buck as much. I don't think as convenience. It's not. It's it's really nice. It, it's a um, it it kind of helps fight the the lock in that you get. Right. You know, one of the issues with, you know, people used to say, you know, should I buy money, you know, movies from uh, Microsoft? Like, Why would you ever do that? You, they're not competitive. They, right. You can't play them anyway. Right. Um, now the movies you bought from Microsoft, many of them will play in other places. Now, there's right. no movies and TV app on Android or iOS, but there is a Movies Anywhere app. But you can also get that. You just link it to your Google account. You can get it through the Google player. You can get it through the Apple player on uh, an iPhone. It, it's, it's nice to use the native app to watch the content you already purchased no matter where you purchased it yeah. it's just a, it's a win there's no downside to this definitely do this All everybody right. right now Good stop tip. listening to this podcast no do i did now. it while listening and i think you can too <laughs> yeah yeah it's not like it's hard as you know walking and chewing gum <laughs> so the app pick of the week is kind of interesting i i feel like we discussed this topic generally a few weeks ago which is this if you buy a lenovo pc or an HPC, a HP PC, or a Dell, or a Samsung, or whatever it is. It comes with whatever it comes with. But one of the things it comes with is this app that's there for support, um, system maintenance, and health checking, uh, download drivers and firmware for the PC. Th these things, every PC maker does this, except for Microsoft. So with Microsoft, the way things work is all of your drivers and firmware updates come through Windows Update, which is cool. But what if something's wrong with the computer? Or what if you just want to check on the health of the computer is what's the battery how's the battery doing that's one of those things you can check over time if it's displays you know the battery effectiveness goes down over time well it turns out microsoft does make an application for this they just don't put it on the computer for some stupid reason and this thing is called surface diagnostic toolkit you can di download it for free obviously there are various ways to get it um you can just download it direct from microsoft you can download Download it from the Surface app that is built into Surface devices. But I think the coolest thing about this is, well, there's two cool things about it. One is, for those people who have decided to stick to Windows 10S or Windows 10 and S mode, they actually make a version of this in the store, right? Because it's a desktop app. So um, previously, if it like a Surface laptop or whatever, Surface Go with Windows 10S, you could not use this app. Now you can. That's neat. But the other second thing that's cool about this is it's, Hardware specific. So depending on the capabilities of your device, so what you, Leo's installing it now, if you're not watching this, so you're going to have to reboot <laughs> after, it, it, after it does its little update thing. But when it reboots, what it does is it steps through all of the stuff that is unique to your hardware. It's really convoluted on Surface Book because Surface Book, not only can you detach the screen, but you can rotate the screen, right? You can put it on backwards, flip the thing down, it goes into different usage modes. It literally tests every one of those modes with and without power connected 
So you have to really be paying attention during the wizard. But you, it will actually step through this amazing set of diagnostic tests. And then it will save it. And you can run these things over time. And it will save the history of the test that you ran. And so if you ever have a problem with your computer and you have to have it serviced by Microsoft or you're doing one of those remote support sessions, they can use that data to find out what happened to your computer. Nice. So this is something, if you're a Surface owner, you need to get this right now. You need to install it. You need to run through the wizard like you're doing right now. You need to step through the diagnostic thing for the, at least once just to do it. There's probably nothing wrong with your computer, but just to kind of get it in there. And then you have to pray to God that nothing ever happens to your computer because you're screwed because <laughs> it's Microsoft. But, but, no, but this is, it's actually really useful. Um, it, it's, I don't understand why this is not on the computer. Yeah. Like this is something that should just be included with Windows, uh, with any Surface PC. All right. So now I have to restart just to. Yeah. And when it reboots, what it's going to do is run through a wizard. You're going to have to play with it. There's literally a, an interactive thing you have to do, which in your case will involve unplugging the keyboard cover, the, the type cover, unplugging the power connector. Using it in both modes, with and without it, oh, that, I'm oh, it's sure. Really, quite a diagnostic. Wow. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's it's pretty incredible. Good deal. Yeah. Yep. Uh, Paul has a link to the Surface Diagnostic Toolkit on his website, therot.com. And now to Mary Jo Foley for the Enterprise Pick of the Week. Yes. So end of end of September this year is Microsoft Ignite, which is their big IT Pro conference, and. Late last week, they published the session list for Ignite, at least some of the sessions. 628 of them, to be precise, Yikes. are now listed. So I went through them to look to see if there's any hints about what we might learn at Ignite. And there were some interesting things I picked out. One is there is a lot of Dynamics 365 content at the show, which is very unusual for Ignite. Um, so a lot of ERP, CRM there is a ton of developer content. This isn't typically a developer show, but there is a lot of developer content. Um, some PWA sessions will be there. Um, lots of things about developer tools. Um, there's a couple of sessions about Surface. One of them calls out LTE specifically, and another calls out the hub, the next version of the hub. Um, so I would expect we might see the hub go into public testing, uh, hub two go into public testing around the time of Ignite. And Surface LTE, I'm thinking that's a reference to the Go uh, because they've said a Surface Go LTE version based on Intel still, by the way, uh, will be out this fall. And there's also a couple hints about SQL Server in there, which I think are probably in reference to the next version of SQL Server um, which we've been hearing little tidbits about. I think that's some private testing right now. So, um, hello. <laughs> Sorry, so I, Paul likes to flip his content. microphone up when he's having a sip of beer. And no, then you I, know what then I then thought I, that was? It sounded like you scratched a record. Like, I, 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 <laughs> like what is he doing? <laughs> Yeah, so uh, <laughs> I'll mute his mic, Mary Jo. Yes, I've only been podcasting for 2,000 years. I'm sorry. <laughs> hey, I sneezed on the podcast today. So I'm like, eh, whoops. Um, so, yeah, if you go to the Microsoft Ignite uh, website, just search for Microsoft Ignite and go to session catalog. You don't have to be registered to go see all these sessions, but you can go and search through them. Um, can search by name, like if you want to see only the Windows sessions, of which there are over a hundred, by the way, hundred things happening there that mention Windows. So uh, yeah, I think it's going to be a good show. We're going to be there live doing Windows Weekly there. Oh, cool! What day is that? Have, it's uh, the last week of September. Oh, that's I think. right. I think I'll be here for that. Actually, will you be there? Yeah. Um, yeah, I couldn't remember if you were back or not. It's yeah, I'll get um, back the twenty-first. So yeah. I'll be there. For yeah, that. it's September 24th. 25th or 4th. Okay, yeah. Good. Yep. I'll be there for yep. that. Yeah, so that's the Enterprise pick. And we already did the code name pick. Oh, that's right. I see a blue arrow pointing... Yeah, blue arrow. <laughs> upward. <laughs> well, in that right. case... <laughs> there it looks like a child scribbling <laughs> on a... Like something you'd put on a refrigerator. <laughs> <laughs> I did it with my pen. Uh, in that case, it's time for 
Let me see here. Oh, yeah, there's the blue arrow. <laughs> and now it's time for beer. Yes, finally. Yes, finally. Um, it's been hot not only in Europe, but in New York, it has been meltingly hot. Tons of humidity, heat. There's not a lot of heavy beers you want to drink in that weather. But you know what a good beer is for that weather? A gozer, which Ooh. is salted, lightly sour beers that a variety of beer makers are making these days. Mm. I had one this week, Westbrook Cucumber Lemon Gozer. Oh, wow. It wow. delicious. Wow. Oh, my gosh. Um, tastes like a cucumber, um, like lightly pickled cucumber with a touch of lemon and a little coriander and a little salt. It's so refreshing. It's almost like a lemonade. It's only 4%. You could drink a lot of them. And it's from Westbrook, which is a an excellent top tier craft beer maker in Mount Pleasant, South Carolina. So if you see the, they're out in cans uh, and they're around right now. So um, sh it should be possible to find them in multiple places. Westbrook Cucumber Lemon Gozer. Highly recommended. Highly recommended. That sounds, I want some right now. <laughs> right now. Mary Jo Foley, she's at allaboutmicrosoft.com. That's her ZDNet blog, and you can uh, read it as she posts virtually every single day. Are you writing your posts on your Surface Go, or are you mostly doing it still on your Acer? Um, or your HP, well, I'm I guess. HP still yeah. mostly or my desktop. I haven't really tried to write anything super long um, on the go yet. Yeah, that would be an interesting. Well, probably for the best. Yes. I know. I think it's for the best, too. <laughs> yeah. uh, you can also find Paul Therat at therat.com when he's not in Sweden. Uh, <laughs> you, no, that's the beauty of therat.com. It's everywhere Paul wants to be. T H U R R O T T. <laughs> like an American Express. Like, yeah, like Visa. Uh, <laughs> T H U R T H U R R O T T H. They're like there are lots of R's and T's in there, and a couple of L's. It's hard. If I slow down, I can't do it. If I say T H U double R O double T, I can do it. But if I start to do a letter at a time, it just falls apart. You know where to go. And, uh, I would have taken up. my wife's maiden name if, as my own if I could have when we got married. Don't it say it out not. loud because I know it's the password for your children's college fund. <laughs> no, <it's not. laughs> uh, yeah. You will find him uh, also at leanpub.com. That's where his books live. And mm -hmm. uh, you'll find both of them right here every Wednesday, right about 11 a.m. Pacific. If Leo doesn't get sidetracked. Uh, that'll be 2 p.m. Eastern Time, 1800 UTC. You can watch it live. Or, uh, yeah, you can watch it live.twit.tv. That's the old page, still alive. Uh, or uh, our, our website, which is twit.tv slash live. Subscribe, and you'll get a copy each and every Wednesday, the minute it's available. We're in every podcast. You just look for Windows Weekly. And, of course, you can download back episodes at twit.tv slash www. Thanks, Paul. Thanks, Mary Jo. And we'll see you next time. I guess, Paul, you'll be back home. Oh, my God. I didn't tell you this. There is a store in Stockholm called Emmaus. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, <laughs> Do they sell stuff from Pennsylvania? No, but how oh. amazing would it be if they had a sister store in Emmaus called Stockholm? Stockholm. <laughs> <laughs> there is. And I have pictures of it. An American store in Stockholm where you can buy Kellogg's Corn Flakes, Heinz Ketchup, oh, yeah. Campbell's Enjoy. Tomato Soup. It's empty. Heinz ketchup. No one's you go to the yeah. British store and buy HP sauce. HP sauce, exactly. <laughs> Curiously unrelated to the computer company. <laughs> uh, did you see that um, former HPE CEO Meg Whitman is now going to be running a mm -hmm. big Hollywood streaming studio? No, I thought studio. you were going to say she was now burning in hell. I, <laughs> <laughs> so, well, that's interesting. It, so Leo Potheker, her predecessor, always gets the heat for things like the... Uh, that big acquisition of the company. So, the guy after him, uh, Mark. Um, oh yeah, Mark Lane. The, yeah. Mark Hurd, rather. The uh, Mark, the, Hurd. Mark he Hurd didn't end up so well either. No, yeah. the, the pretexting uh, case. Mm -hmm. um, but was Meg that bad a CEO? She at least had the good sense to split HP into two parts. Mm. Mm. Okay. Mm. Huh. <laughs> <laughs> right. Well, she's huh. uh, it's an odd person to tap for this because uh, yeah. Uh, Jeffrey Katzenberg has created a new over-the-top streaming network, kind of another Netflix, I think. But they've got a, more than a billion in funding. Katzenberg put seven hundred some million was, in. Was Meg Whitman? She was eBay, right? 
Oh, it's, sure. it's Meg Whitman. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Meg she was eBay. Yeah, eBay, yeah. and then yeah, she was eBay, and, and then and then HP. Yeah. And she would be the CEO, even though she has no I mean, experience she was, in Hollywood or media. She was no Carly Fiorina. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> but who was? Who <laughs> <laughs> all right. We're gonna sell this iPod, and it's gonna be <laughs> HP Blue. Oh God, that was a terrible idea. Yep. All right, everybody. Thank you for joining us. We'll see you next week on Windows Weekly.